Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Friday Night Live, presented by Horizon Media Group. It's going to be uh, presented by exactly, presented by uh, Newport Cinema Four and McSween McSween and Green Wall Partners. And uh, Jack, it is fall. Fall is here. The leaves are changing. The Vols are undefeated. And best of all, it is football time in Cock County. We're back. It's beautiful, Rob. It's listen. It's so great to be with you, Rob. It really is. It's great to be with you too, Jack. It's great to have the whole team. We got the band back together just for one <laughs> show only tonight, and we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to watch uh, some great football. We're going to honor some of these senior students, these athletes that have uh, have played some of them for all four years for us, and we've put on a great show and have given a lot. And we're uh, really grateful to have them and their families out here tonight. And uh, it's a little warm tonight, a little warmer than what we usually have for the end of the no season. Kidding. But I have a feeling that by the end of the night, it's going to be uh, pretty chilly. So we got our jackets ready and folks fix yourself some popcorn and hot chocolate at home and get ready for uh, just a heck of a game we got uh, the fighting cocks of Cock County tonight taking on the Smoky Bears of Sevier County Cock County comes into the game two and seven Sevier County sitting at six and three uh, it's going to be a tough one tonight, Rob. It's going to be a challenge. It is. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, these guys always give us a tough time. Uh, I was just thinking about it today. We're they're the, our neighbors across the county, uh, across the line, and so uh, this could be uh, this could be a real challenge for us. It always is, and uh, it's kind of a mountain classic for us here. It's uh, the battle of our almost like our cousin, our sister county. So uh, just here in a few minutes, uh, so sit tight, and we'll get to the game with all our best All right, so we're going to start start off uh, covering senior night before kickoff, and we're going to honor these seniors from not just football, but from several sports uh, such as uh, dance, cheer, run cross country, and also our uh, our uh, mascot. <laughs>
Once again, we want to crack, put our hands together for our 2022-2023 CCHS dance team. Parents and sister Kevin Elliott and Isaiah Elliott. Baylor has played for CCHS for four years. As a sophomore, he became the starting quarterback where he has played the position for three years. He plans to attend college in the fall to pursue his career in football and to further his education and major in sports management. He wants to thank his coaches for their time and patience. Once again, Baylor Baxter. All right, moving on here to number two, Anthony Steinbacher. Anthony Steinbacher is being escorted by his mom, Sophia Steinbacher. He has been a member of the football team for his junior and senior years. His position for CCHS is the kicker, punter. He plans on pursuing his education by majoring in political science. Once again, Anthony Steinbacher. Number three, Brazen Stewart. <laughs> Brazen Stewart is the son of James Una, Rucker Stewart, and the late Barry Stewart. He is being escorted by his mom and his sisters, Delisa, TJ, Uriah, and Micaiah, and his nephew, August. He has been a member of the CCHS football team for all four years. He has been a force as a wide receiver on offense and defense, defensive back on defense. Brazen plans on attending a four-year college in the fall to, per to pursue a business degree and play sports. He would like to thank all the coaches for helping him to get to this point. Once again, Brazen Stewart. <laughs> Number four, Lakin France. Lake in France is the son of Amber France. He is being escorted by his mom, <coughs> Nana Christine Neza, his brother Tavian, and his sister Tira, Tyra. Sorry. <coughs> he has played football for CCHS for all four years in the position of wide receiver on offense and defensive back on defense. Lakin plans on attending a four-year college in the fall to pursue a business degree. 
Once again, Lakin Brantz. Number 14, Kendrick White. Kendrick White is the son of Cindy and Derek Webb and the late Dustin White. Kendrick has played for CCHS for three years. He plays wide receiver on offense and defensive back on defense. He also returns the ball on kickoff. Kendrick plans to attend TN College of Applied Technology in, in Industrial Maintenance. Once again, number 14, Kendrick White. And number 29, Jonathan Rivera. Jonathan is the son of Michael and Ashley Rivera. He has played football for CCHS for two years. His position on the field is a receiver on offense and a safety on defense. Jonathan plans on pursuing a career in med school to study optometry. Optometry, sorry. Number 29, Jonathan Rivera. Number 34, Dakota Crossley. Dakota Crossley is the son of Sherry and James Barrett. He is being escorted by his parents and his brother Calvin. This is his first year playing for Cock County High School where his position is wide receiver on offense and defensive end on defense. Dakota plans on attending college in the fall to become an astronomer. Once again, number 34, Dakota Crossley. And number 50, Holden Woods. Holden Woods is being escorted by his grandmother, Donna Woods. He has played football for three years. His position is alignment on offense and defense. Holden's future plans are to play football at the next level and major in veterinary science and zoology. Once again, number 50, Holden Woods. Number 54, Ethan Hall. Ethan Hall is the son of Wanda Hall. He has played football for Cock County High School for four years. He has played the position of linebacker and left guard. He, he plans on furthering his education at the TN College of Applied Technology. Once again, number 54, Ethan Hall. Number 58, Kasian Singh Massengill. He is the son of Nadira Harichirin. He is being escorted by his mom, Matt, his mom, Matt Winstead, and Francisco Garcia. Tay has been a member of the CCHS football team for all four years. His position is a lineman where he plays on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. He plans on attending the University of Tennessee to pursue a master's degree in international business. Once again, number 58, Tasian Singh Massingill. And number 60, Maverick Galipsky. Maverick is the son of Daniel and Brianna Step Banner. He is being escorted by his dad. He has played football for three years. His position on the team is an offensive and defensive lineman. He wants to pursue a career as a national park ranger. Once again, number 60, Maverick Galipsky. And number 63, Zeke Ramos. Zeke is the son of Daniela Ramos and Leo Ramos. He is being escorted by his parents and his sister, Estella. Zeke has been a member of the CCHS football team for two years. His position on the team is a lineman, and he plays on the line in offense and defense. Upon graduation, Zeke plans on furthering his education in college. Once again, number 63, Zeke Ramos. And number 66, Dylan Ellison. 
Dylan is the son of Lindsey Ellison. He has played football all four years at Cock County High School. His position on the team is a lineman on offense and defense. Dylan plans to continue pursuing his football career at the next level and earn, and earn a degree in sports medicine. Once again, number 66, Dylan Ellison. And our last football senior tonight is number 69, Tyler Rollins. <laughs> Tyler is the son of Sonia and Lonnie Cash. He has played football since he was five years old and has played for CCHS for all four years. His position on the field is defensive tackle on defense and guard on offense. Tyler is undecided on his plans after graduation. Once again, number 69, Tyler Rollins. Let's put our hands once, one more time together for our senior football players, their parents, their guardians, all those who have put their time in. We thank you for what you have done and how you represented yourself here at Cock County High School. Once again, thank you all. All right, now for our CCHS Red Regiment Seniors of 2022. Starting off with Alexa Barrett. Escorted tonight by her parents, Sarah and Corey Wright. Lexi plans to attend Walter State, then a four-year university to study music education. Once again, Alexia Barrett. Our next senior is Aiden Coy. Escorted tonight by his mother, Monica Coy. Aiden plans to join the Army to defend our country. Once again, Aiden Coy. <laughs> Hannah Gunter McLean. Escorted tonight by her mother, Tabitha Gunter. Hannah's plans after graduation are to hopefully get a job at Food City in Newport. Once again, Hannah Gunter McLean. <laughs> Macy Hale. Escorted tonight by her parents, Anthony and Lee Hale. Macy plans to attend Lincoln Memorial University to become a math teacher. Once again, Macy Hale. <laughs> Samara Kassav. Escorted tonight by her parents, Daniel, Danielle and Matthew Howard. Samara plans to study marketing in college. Once again, Samara Kassab. <laughs> Braxton Kelly. Escorted tonight by Officer Van Williams and Officer Vaughn. After graduation, Braxton plans to work for his fa father's heating and air business. Once again, Braxton Kelly. <laughs> Sarah Lane. Sarah is escorted tonight by her band mom, Destiny Freeman. Sarah's plans to attend Carson Newman University and major in culinary arts. Once again, Sarah Lane. Dixie Norton. Dixie is escorted tonight by her parents, Terrence and Phoebe Norton, and her brother, Max Norton. After graduation, Dixie plans to enter the nursing program at Walter State. Once again, Dixie Norton. <laughs> Billy Osornio, escorted tonight by his parents, Pamela and Chris Osornio. Billy is enlisting in the Navy after graduation. Once again, Billy Osornio. C.C. Panetta. Tonight, C.C. is escorted by her grandfather, 
Edward Rondo and her sister Zoe Panetta. Cece plans to attend college and obtain a degree in animal science. Once again, Cece Panetta. Emily Ramsey. Emily is escorted tonight by her parents, Michael and Melinda Ramsey. Emily plans to attend college for a degree in dental hygiene. Once again, Emily Ramsey. Terry Sweeten. Tonight, Terry is escorted by friends Taylor Henderson and Ty Gibson. Terry's future plans are to become a color guard performer and instructor. Once again, Terry Sweeten. Marcelio Vargas. Marcelio is escorted tonight by his mother, Karen Hoffman. Marcelio plans to attend Walter State and the University of Tennessee to major in music education. Once again, Marcelio Vargas. Jody Vaughn. Tonight, Jody is escorted by her parents, Karen and Billy Vaughn. Jody plans to attend college to study business administration. Once again, Jody Vaughn. Isaiah Walton. Tonight, Isaiah is escorted by his parents, John and Missy Walton, and his sister, Josie Walton. Isaiah plans to attend Western Carolina University to major in music education in hopes of becoming a band director at Cott County High School. However, Isaiah's biggest dream is to be the drummer in a band and tour the world. Once again, Isaiah Walton. And our last senior band member tonight, Alexis Bucket White. Alexis is escorted tonight by her parents, Vanessa White and Gabriel Timmons. She plans to attend college in California to major in theater and performing arts to become an actor. Once again, Alexis Bucket White. Fans, that concludes our marching band senior members. Please give them another round of applause for not only them, but for their parents and their guardians and all those who stood by them. Thank you once again how you all represent Cock County High School. All right. Starting off with uh, cross country, our 2022 CCHS senior is Jenna Pittman. <laughs> Jenna is the daughter of Kelvin and Je uh, Jeannie Pittman. She is a member of HOSA, National Honor Society, Beta Club, Student Council, Key Club, and FCA. Jenna plans on attending a four-year university to study nursing and run cross country. Last week, listen to this, last week Jenna placed second in the regional cross country meet. So, this, so next Thursday, she will be competing in the TSSAA State Cross Country Championship in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Jenna is so thankful for her coaches and teachers at CCHS that have brought her so much joy the last four years. Once again, Jenna Pittman. And good luck next Thursday. All right, and our mascot, Madison Matthews. Madison is the daughter of Rebecca Ledford. She is a member of HOSA, National Society of High, of High School Scholars, and the Pep Club. Madison is the CCHS mascot, Cocky, and the first full-time female mascot the school has had in 17 years. Her future plans are undetermined at this time, she says Cock County High School will always have a special place in her heart and she will still be coming to the games. Once again, thank you, Madison. And for our only senior on the dance team, Leah Arwood. Leah is the daughter of Stacy and Mark Arwood. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Beta Club, Student Council, and F FCCLA. 
Leah plans to attend ETSU in the fall to major in psychology. She would like to thank <clears throat> to say thank you to Miss Susan for always being there for me and teaching me everything I know about dance. Once again, Leah Arwood. <clears throat> now for our 2022 CCHS cheer team. Our first senior is Allie Franks. Allie Franks is the daughter of Edwin and Gretchen Franks. She is a member of FCCLA, National Honor Society, Beta Club, Mu Alpha Theta, Key Club, and FCA. Her future plans are to attend college in the fall to pursue a career in pediatric psychology. Allie is very thankful for the coaches and the love they give her. She will miss the family of the cheer team and will always remember the joy cheerleading brought to her. Once again, Allie Franks. And our last senior for tonight is Sally Shelton. Sally is the daughter of Jeremy and Julie Shelton. She is a member of the track team, family career, and community leaders of America, the Beta Club, and National Honor Society. Sally wants to pursue a career in college to, to study sales and marketing. She is so thankful for all the friendships cheerleading has brought her and will cherish the memory she has made forever. Once again, Sally Shelton. If you would, this does conclude our senior nights for all our athletes for the fall sports. And if you would, put your hands once again together and thank them and their parents and guardians. time ladies and gentlemen we are just going to do our national anthem uh, and not our alma mater tonight it will be our national anthem good evening ladies and gentlemen once again please rise for the presentation of the colors by the Cock County Navy Junior ROTC they are under the command of Cadet Commander Benjamin Benton accompanied by Cadet John Hayes Cadet Braden Torgerson and Cadet Cameron Jones. <laughs> At this time, if everybody would remain standing, and gentlemen, remove your caps as we honor our country as the CCHS Red Regiment performs our national anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we would like to thank tonight's team sponsor, Broadway and Maine, for your continued support of Pike County High School Athletics. Every, tonight, when every first down, it will be a Broadway and Maine first and ten. We would also like, the Pike County High School would like to show our appreciation to First United Methodist Church for providing the pregame. It wasn't actually last week because we had a bye week, but the week prior to that, and we would also like to thank Senior Moms tonight for providing the pregame meal for all our athletes. Oh, so better. once again, we, do, we know it goes a lot of preparation, but we do want to thank you for that. Okay. We'll, we'll run one down here a little bit. He's at 50%. Yeah, next time out, we got you. Oh, you're tapped in too, aren't you, Robert? Tennessee. Jack, we've been all over this, at least this portion of the state, and uh, I don't think there's any other stadium that can, can really compete with what this stadium has to offer. It's the best, it's, it's the Neyland Stadium of high school sports, I think. It's got a lot of capacity, a lot of people here tonight to see Cock County play. It's a balmy, about 70 degrees here at kickoff. Yeah, and I'd say that as soon as the sun uh, dips below the horizon, that temperature is going to start to drop uh, pretty quickly, I imagine, especially this time of year. We've got high school football coming your way in three and a half minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Rob Mathis, what do you think the keys for the Cox tonight are to get a win over the Smoky Bears? Well, I was looking at some of the statistics and doing a little bit of analysis of the two teams. We are the stronger second quarter team uh, as far as points scored per quarter. So we're generally a first half team. They seem to be a stronger second half team. So what we need to do is stay strong, get off to an early start, and then ramp that up and keep that strength in the second quarter, but then also maintain that play of full four quarters of football. I think if we do that, um, we're going to be in really good shape. As far as points scored per game, they are, they're less than a touchdown ahead of us on average. So uh, they are not a high scoring team. This could be a defensive struggle. And if we can play four quarters of football and maintain that offense defensive balance, I think we're going to have a really good shot at winning this game, Jack. Cock County enters the game at two and seven. The Smoky Bears enter the game at six and three in the region. This is a region game. Senior night here at Larry Williams Stadium in Newport, Tennessee. It's Friday Night Live. Brought to you by Horizon Media Group and presented by Newport Cinema 4 and McSween, McSween, and Green, who I know a few things about. 
great attorneys down in downtown Newport. They'll take care of all your needs. You need a will, go to them. You need an estate, anything you need. Legal-wise, go visit McSween, McSween and Green, 321 East Broadway. And you know, Jack, speaking of our presenters tonight, uh, Newport Cinema 4 would like us to know that the holidays are around the corner, so Cinema Newport Cinema 4 would like to tell you and about a few of their favorite things. They like fresh, hot popcorn, hot chocolate, cuddly, kittens, Dodge Challengers, and hot dogs of all kinds. We also like blockbusters on the big screen, the Smoky Mountains in the fall of good country cooking, fish, uh, fishing, and Dolly Parton, but be sure to add the Newport Cinema 4 to your list of favorite things this holiday season. And here come the fighting cops. Here they are, folks, taking the field. These seniors taking the field at Larry Field or Larry Williams Stadium for the last time in their careers. And uh, they're coming out to make it count, Jack. Got 14 seniors to honor tonight, including the uh, veteran quarterback, Baylor Baxter, who we knew and we know a few things about, Rob. We've watched him play for a few years now. We sure have. Yeah, the last uh, when we did the 2020 season, he was, I think that was his first year at the helm of the Fighting Cox. So uh, he is a veteran quarterback. He's got three years under his belt as a starter. And uh, he is uh, he is primed to, to go out on a high note here and uh, to have the game of his life. Smoky Bears take the field. White tops, purple britches, purple helmets. Moving, they're going to be kicking from right to left on your radio dial. Boy, it's great to be back here on Friday night, Rob. Boy, it sure is. You know, every time I come out here, you know, like I was talking about, uh, that how this stadium is the best place to watch high school football. This is what really, um, this is America. Uh, so this is small town America at its best. These are our kids out here playing. These are our friends and family in the stands. Uh, this is uh, a community coming together like, like few like few do, uh, in a rare, few occasions can do. Looks like the Big Red will receive the opening kick. Right. Looks like Brazen Stewart is deep in the Fighting Cops. Senior wide receiver. He'll be playing in an all-star game as a defensive back, two-way player. And we got like an onside kick. kick. It's going to be picked up around the 28-yard line by the Fighting Cox, and that's where they'll start this drive. That widely, wisely covered up by Dakota Crossley. Uh, he just jumped on that ball and went down. That is a smart move. We're going to, the Cox are going to be starting, it looks like, around the 27-yard line. Uh, this is going to be a nice starting field position for them. Like kind of in between a squib and an onside kick. Not really sure if that was the plan. It was an onside squib. It will be first and 10, Scott County will start with pretty good field position. Baylor Baxter at the helm. Cox in the shotgun formation. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Baxter takes the snap. Play action throws. It's caught. He's down to the 45-yard line. I think that'll be a big red first down. Oh, you got that? Yeah, that's a first down and then some. Jeremy Faison first down. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we want to let everybody know that tonight our, one of our sponsors is going to be Jeremy Faison, and he is sponsoring our first down. So every first down will be a state representative, Jeremy Faison, first down. All right, good start for the big red. Nice crisp throw from Baylor Baxter. He's in the shotgun again. This time he's got three wide receivers to the right side and one to the left side. Baxter yeah. looks. Takes the snap, drops, going to throw a screen pass. It's caught, it bobbled, then caught by Brazen Stewart. He's going to be stopped for about a game of one. Well, it's a pass from one senior to another, and the veteran status of both those uh, players really showed in that regard. Uh, looks like uh, uh, Baxter, he is off to a good start. He's got two passes right on the money. He's making good decisions. Uh, when uh, Brazen uh, missed the first attempt at that catch, he didn't panic. He just reached up and grabbed it, snatched it right out of the air. That's a veteran play right there, and they, they got a few yards out of it. Second down and about eight and a half, Baxter in the shotgun again. Got an H back to his left. He's gonna hand the ball off. No, he's gonna keep it, he's gonna run, he's got some room. He's past the 50 down to the 45, he's got another big red, Jeremy Faison, first down. Wow, well done, well executed. Fake, even faked us out up here, Jack. Certainly did, Baylor Baxter, a dual threat quarterback. Well, this team has a lot of seniors and it shows tonight. Big Red on the move, we got two first downs and we're in Smoky Bear territory. Baxter takes the snap, uh oh. Dropped it and it's rolling, he's gonna pick it up and he's gonna be swarmed by some white shirts and dropped around the 35 yard line. I don't think he was ready for that snap, Jack. It looked like he may have been looking in another direction and the ball just went right by him. So that's gonna be a big loss for the Big Red. Do we had some momentum going, gonna have to get it back going now. 10.30 left in the first quarter. 
Well, the good news for the uh, for the Big Red is there's a back shooter did a good job of covering that up once he got by him. He didn't panic. He uh, looked. There was nothing there, so he just wisely went down, didn't risk injury or, or fumble. Baxter's always had a good deep ball. We might have to see one here. Four wide receivers again. And running back in the backfield. Got a penalty marker on the play here. It looks like it's about second and 26 or so for the Big Red. Loss of 16 on that errant snap. And it looks like we're going to be backed up another five yards. Uh, for a false start penalty. So a little bit of sputtering here for the Fighting Cox. It's going to be second down in the country mile. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how we respond to this, Jack. Uh, Baxter takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He rolls right. Still looking. He's going to throw, and it's going to be caught and oh. dropped by Brazen Stewart. So another pretty good throw there from Taylor Baxter. Yeah, that was a bullet. That was right on target. Brazen just having a little bit of trouble grabbing on, the, finding a handle on that ball. But uh, he's going to settle in. Uh, the, the opportunities are there for sure. So this will be third down and very long for the Fighting Cox. Had a couple first downs really moving the ball well, Rob. And then we had a couple uh, blow-ups. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sometimes it just takes one miscue to derail a drive. But uh, this drive's not over. It's only third down. Baxter drops the throw. He's looking. He steps up in the pocket and throws. Deep. He's got Stewart again, who's going to get past the original line of scrimmage and close to a first down. Wow, what a play. Stewart found the handle on that ball, and he is about three yards short of a first down. They got He picked up about 27 yards on that pass. Great throw and catch there. I think Brazen Stewart is going to be a primary target tonight for Baylor Baxter. Absolutely. And after you see that play, we understand exactly why. Looks like the Cox are going to go for it here on fourth down and about three yards yeah, in Smoky not? Bear territory. Got four wide receivers, maybe trying to draw them off sides with a hard count. Baxter looks to the sideline, shouts out the play, takes the snap, uh, you're doing drops the throw. He's going to throw left. He's got a man in his oh, cock. What, what a beautiful catch. Wow. Over there on the far sideline, a great throw from Baylor Baxter. Boy, the Big Red just coming out and playing a little bit of pitch and catch tonight. They are on target. Orrin Hazelwood on the catch there for the Big Red. That's another Jeremy Faison first down. And we said that we're going to find out what they're made out of. They just showed us. They dug themselves out of that hole, Jack. Well done. Baxter moving the ball. He's going to throw it again. He's got another man wide open. That's going to go for close to a first down. Hazelwood and Stewart are really doing the heavy lifting on this drive. Warren Hazelwood, another senior. Excuse me, he's just a sophomore, but nonetheless, a great catch there. It's going to be second down and short here for the Big Red. Baylor Baxter's really humming it tonight, Rob. Boy, he is. And, you know, his receivers are really helping him out as well. He's on target, and they're finding a handle on that ball. Second down and two. We're inside the 15-yard line in the red zone here, threatening to score on the Smoky Bears. Baxter takes the snap. He's going to hand off left side, and he's going to be swarmed in the backfield. It's going to be a loss of uh, at least one there. And it'll be third down. Brought down just for a few loss there. It will be third down. Looks like that was uh, Daniel Price. Uh, uh, Daniel Price on that attempted run there. Big third down here. Third down and five. Cock County's got some momentum. Three first downs on this drive. This year, it looks like the passing attack is uh, is definitely the, the lethal weapon of the night so far. Baxter's got two wide receivers to the left and two to the right. He drops the throw. He's looking left. He's going to throw left. And it's just short. He had a man, but he kind of skipped it up there. He and did. it's going to be fourth down again here. Short. Looks like we may be bringing out the kicking team to get some points on the board. Had a lot of mustard on that throw. It was just a little bit short. Pass was attempted to number 23. Looks like Anthony Steinbacher is going to come out to attempt a field goal. <laughs> Chris, Folks, we'd like to remind you one of our sponsors tonight is Stinted Automotive. Uh, they're out there on 2570 at Bags of 432. Pretty Chris, Chris. They're, uh, Jacob, get tight on the kick. If you're looking for a new car or a used car, they are uh, one of the. Oh, oh, and the kick is blocked. The Smoky Bears pick it up Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. at their own 24 yard line. 
Yeah, it looks like that guy just came through the line there. He looked to be untouched. So Cott County on their opening drive moves it down the field and into the red zone, but ultimately unable to score. Well, Jack, we got a lot of positive in that drive there. They came down, they really kind of had their way until it got down into the inside of the red zone. So we're going to have to clean that up a little bit, but I saw a lot of positive to build on in that first drive. Smoky Bears in a pistol formation. Quarterback takes the snap. He's going to hand it off. It's bobbled. He's going to run up the middle. He pops it. He's got about a gain of five or six there on first down. Jack, uh, getting back to Stinnett Automotive, uh, yeah, they're they're one of the uh, finest automotive dealers in East Tennessee. Those folks are uh, trustworthy. They're always going to give you the best deal that they possibly can, and uh, they're the hometown uh, car dealer here in uh, Cock County. I advise uh, just uh, everyone to go out and, and go shopping if you're going to get in the market for a car. Christian Hoffman takes the snap. He's going to hand off right side. Pretty good coverage there, but he bounces out to the outside. He's going to have a first down and more. He's out past the 40-yard line. Well, Jack, it looks like we maybe have the running game on uh, the on the Sevier County side versus the passing game on our side. So we're going to see which, which way this goes. Looks like we initially had him bottled up, but he got loose. Yeah, he broke containment for sure. It's going to be a first down for the Smoky Bears at their own 40-yard line. Seven minutes and six seconds left in this first quarter. It's Friday Night Live, presented by Newport Cinema 4 and McSween, McSween and Green. Let me see number four, the cornerback. The big red iron curtain on defense. Black tops, silver britches, red helmets. Hoffman takes the snap. He's going to hand off again. They're going to run it right up the middle, and this time he's going to have about five or six there again on first down. Yeah, their offensive line seems to be getting the push, and their uh, their running backs are just just following that momentum. Malachi Pate, 5'8", Jr., on the carry there for the Smoky Bears. Quarterback looks to the sideline for a signal. Smokey Bears in the pistol formation again. Three straight runs for the Smokey Bears. Now the running back moves in motion. Hoffman takes the snap. He's looking to throw this time. He's going to throw long to the left side. It's almost intercepted. Great play there. Excellent That's coverage. Both of those defenders converged where the ball was going, and one of them almost grabbed it out of the air. That's senior Lake in France on the coverage there. Yeah, Lake in France with the outstanding defensive play. He came just a, a finger of having an interception. Lake in France, the senior, had a great career here at Cock County. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. All right, Francis, third down. Let's get behind this defense. Third down and five. Need a big stop here. Yeah, yeah. Hoffman takes the snap. He's going to hand off up the middle again. Oh, and we met at the line. Oh. We contained him initially, but it looks like he got free and will have a first down. Yeah, that running back, he really oh, after, yeah, hit yards yeah, yeah. after contact. He's going to be really good tonight, it looks like. Going to have did. to do a better job of wrapping up when we get yeah. first contact. Yeah, if we, can get, if we can get to the point to where the first, uh, first guy making contact brings him down, then that's going to do a lot to derail their offense. Smoky Bears now in Cock County territory at the 49-yard line. Be first and ten. Just under six minutes left here in the first quarter. Yeah, I thought we had him stopped in that first contact. Getting good push up front. Put the quarterback in the center. Ready, Chris? Christian Hoffman at quarterback. He takes the snap. Looks like he's going to hand off again up the middle, and that's going to be another healthy gain there for the Smoky Bears. Yep, ready to ready. And I don't blame them for going back to the running game and had a lot of success with it. Yeah, their offensive line opened up a nice running lane that time. Our defense did a good job converging on it. That was Malachi Pate on the carry again. For the Smoky Bears. It's going to be second down and about four. Hoffman's in the pistol formation. Paid a couple yards behind him. He takes a the snap. Blitz. He's going to hand off again. We did blitz him, and this time he's going to have another gain. Looks like about two or three there. Looks like the uh, Cock County defensive coordinator is bringing some help in on that one. That was a good call. Uh, if that play had been going to the left, we'd have bottled him up real nice and tight. But we got him on a third down now. Third down is short here for the Smoky Bears. I think it's a good move by the defense to bring a little help on the run game because they don't seem to be doing a lot in the air. And when they have, we've been all over it. Exactly, yeah, great coverage. 
All right, quarterback looks around. He's going to wait for the snap and take it. We bring another blitz. They run right up the middle, and this time he's going to pop it free. He's up past the 30 down to the 25-yard line for another Snooky Bear first down. Yeah, boy, that, uh, that running back for uh, Sevier County, he is just, he's really getting after it. Warren Hazelwood and Baylor Baxter converge for a tackle there. Looks like they're doing it all tonight. A couple of Iron Men, Rob. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, you know, that we're just about a half a step away from dialing him up. We almost had him in the backfield that play. Smokey Bears moving down the field. Their quarterback takes the snap. They're going to hand it off again. Surprise, surprise. And he's going to have another nice. sizable gain there. But we do bottle him up before he pops it loose. Yeah, we stopped him for a gain of uh, about two and a half yards that time. So we're, I think we're starting to dial in and uh, key on that running back there. Folks like to uh, invite everybody to come out to the woodshed. Uh, they're open Thursday through Saturday, and some of the best food that you'll find this side of the Smoky Mountains or the other side, for that matter. Get the ribs, trust me. Uh, after this play, the quarterback takes the snap. He's going to hand off left side. This oh, time we've got is. him wrapped up in the backfield. Yeah, they're getting these guys dialed in. You can only run it right up the middle so many times, Rob, before that exactly. doesn't you work know, anymore. I am really glad to see that our guys, are, they're learning each play. They're, they're learning the running back, learning this offensive line. Uh, the only thing that concerns me is you can't really sell out on the run every play because when they decide to throw it over the top, you might have an issue. Yeah, and that's exactly right. Yeah, we just have to play smart, that's for sure. Smoky Bears here. Christian Hoffman takes the snap. He's going to throw this time. He looks over the middle, and it's going to be incomplete. Wow, fourth down and nine. Big Red holding strong. Well, the ball is on about the 25, 26-yard line. It looks like the Bears are going to be going for it on fourth down. Yeah, kind of a no-man's land here. Not much choice. Um, yeah, you're too far for a field goal and you're almost too close for a punt. Offense stays on the field. While we've got a second here, I want to also invite everybody to come out to the grease rack, uh, Newport Staple. Oh, yeah, the grease rack just this past summer celebrated 50 years of being in business as a restaurant. There's another one of the finer establishments you can go to eat here in Cock County. All right, hopping in the shotgun. He takes a snap and looks left. He's going to throw. He's got a man. It's caught. Ten, five. And he's inside the five-yard line. It's going to be a first and goal for the Smoky Bears. Well, that's, that's tough. You hold, them, you hold them strong for three downs, and then they're able to get loose like that. A catch there for freshman Bryson Hedrick for the Smoky Bears. And first and goal at the five. They're knocking on the door here. Coming out in a jumbo set. Three men in the backfield. They're going to hand it off right up the chute, and he's going to score. That's going to be six points for the Smoky Bears. Yeah, the offensive line opened up a real nice running lane. He uh, was hardly touched going in for that one. Bryson Lane on the score there for the Smoky Bears. I think that's his first touch of the night, isn't it? I believe it is. So Sevier County will line up for the extra point, up six to nothing here with two minutes left or thereabout in the first quarter. Kick is up, and the kick is right down the middle. So your score now is 7 nothing in favor of Sevier County High School. And folks, uh, again, if, if you're in the area, whether you're a local or just traveling through, uh, the grease rack and the woodshed are two of the, the best choices you can make to eat, whether you're, it doesn't matter where you're at, either in Sevier County or Cod County or any other county around. Uh, those are two family-owned and just out, just wonderful places to eat. Uh, you can't go wrong. It doesn't matter what you get. It's all good. That's exactly right. 50 years the grease rack's been uh, in this community. Ask, if you ask the owner, Earl Woods, uh, he'll tell you that the, the baby steaks are one of the best way to go out there. I didn't take you for a medallions kind of guy, Rob. I, I, I see you as more of a porterhouse, maybe like a, I like a ribeye. It all. Okay. Fair as long as, as long as, I'll take that in seconds. <laughs> as long as it had a mother, right? Exactly right. <laughs> as long as it's grilled, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, Cock County will receive the kickoff. Brazen Stewart just back. Kendrick White. Both seniors for the Fighting Cops here on senior night. Jacob, Jacob. At Larry Williams Field in Newport, Tennessee. Pretty Jacob. Take it, Jacob. 
Kick is off, and it's a little bit better one this time, but the up man's still going to take it, and he's going to run it upfield. He cuts up the middle. He's got a little bit of space. He's running it up almost to the 35-yard line where the Cox will take over. That was a nice return. He got about another seven yards out of that. We're past the 30-yard line. Looks like they're kicking it to the up man by design. Not sure why. They might be a little bit leery of kicking it to Brazen Stewart back there. It could be. It could be. Either way, it's resulting in good field position for us, so we'll take that. Let's see if we can avoid the miscues and just uh, drive this one home like we had the potential to do last drive. We had a lot of good stuff going on in that first drive. Let's see if we can uh, tighten up the bolts a little bit and, and get it to the house. Great opening drive for Baylor Baxter and company. He's in the shotgun formation. He's got three wide receivers to the right and one to the left. He takes the snap, play action. He's going to throw a screen. Lake and France is there, and he's going to be swarmed and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That was a good catch. You might want to tuck that ball in a little closer. <laughs> A little bit dangerous there. My poor heart can barely take it. <laughs> <laughs> Loss of a few there on first down for Cock County. It's going to be second, and it looks like about 13. <clears throat> Baxter in the shotgun again. He takes the snap, and he's going to keep this one. He's going to run to the right side. He's got a little bit of room past the 30. 540 and he's going to run out of bounds. I think he got a first down. That is a Jeremy facing first down. Uh, nice run there from Baylor Baxter. Oh, well, wow, I don't agree with that, Mark. I think they just oh, yeah. robbed him of about five yards. They mark it down at the Cock County 41, which is going to give us a third down and two. Baxter's still in the shotgun. Three to the left, one to the right. Looks like he went with the hard count. We almost got him, but they managed not to draw, uh, jump off sides. Baxter shouts the play to his men. And he's going to take it under center and sneak it. He doesn't have a lot of room, and I don't believe he got the first. Yeah, I don't think he got there either, Jack. Luckily, we've got one more try at that if they want to take the roll of the dice. Folks, we're talking about fall. You know, what comes with fall is the change of seasons is sometimes we have unwanted guests in our home, and I'm not talking about the in-laws. <laughs> I'm talking about the uh, critters. So uh, you call Rocky Top Pest Control for, and get ahead of the game and uh, get them to treat your house and just keep those uh, unwanted visitors out before they come. Now, your mother-in-law we can't help you with, <laughs> but the rest of it we can. Rocky Top Pest Control, another one of our great sponsors here, Friday Night Live, <coughs> brought to you by the Horizon Media Group. And presented by Smoky Mountain, the, the uh, Newport Cinema 4, and McSween, McSween Green, law partners. All right, fourth and one, the Cox are going to go for it here in their own territory. Somebody called a timeout, it appears, it looks like. No, nope. I think that's a delay of game there on Cock County. That's going to push us back five yards. So, you know, our coverage has been really good tonight, our pass coverage. It's almost, you know, some people would say their coverage is, they're on them like a dirty shirt. Well, if you don't want a dirty shirt, if you want a clean, brand new clean shirt, go to Rick Faust Screen Printing, Screen Designs. Beautiful, Rob, beautiful. <laughs> Uh, Go get a nice clean shirt with anything you want on it. If you can dream it, Faust can print it. That is Faust Screen Designs Custom Screen Printing right here in Newport, Tennessee. You can say a lot of things about Rob Mathis, but you can't say he ain't a professional. <laughs> All right, looks like we did get a timeout called. It's going to be fourth and one for Cock County inside their own territory. What do you think, Rob? Should we go for it here? You know what? Uh, yeah, I think we should. I agree with you. I mean, we're, we're down. Uh, we've got about 30 seconds left to go. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Uh, we need to establish some dominance here. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we need to show that we've got the beef to push it a yard and a half if we need to. All right, fourth down. Good job. All right, and one yard to go. The offense is on the field. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't look like Baylor Baxter in at quarterback. Looks like we might have a jumbo package in. Looks like Brazen Stewart in the quarterback. We might be running a little bit of a perhaps a little wildcat. Brazen Stewart takes the snap. He runs to the left, and oh, he's going to be oh, hit oh. and dropped before he can get around the quarter, and that's going to be a turnover on downs inside the 40-yard line for the Big Red. Yeah, they just had, he had one man to beat, and that guy got to him. If he had him beat, he would have been a, that would have been a first down and then some. He would still be running. Really good tackle there from. Yeah, that was solid. Uh, he's our, he's yeah, already exactly. down there. I think you're right, Rob. If he cuts the corner there, we're going to be looking at a chunk. 
You know, they say football is a game of inches, and that's it's not just the inches on the field here, but it's the inches in the middle of the play as well. All right, Smoky Bears take over inside Cock County Territory at the 40-yard line. It's going to be first and 10. They're in the pistol formation. Quarterback looks, takes a snap, or blitzing again. He's going to roll. He's going to throw. And he's got a man. It's caught. And he's going to be dragged down inside the end zone for six points for Sevier County. A touchdown, 40-yard touchdown pass for Christian Hoffman. Well, he just found the hole in the coverage. Uh, we had pretty good coverage, but there was just one guy that kind of popped loose there, and he found him. Well, I hate to bring this up and be a negative Nancy, but uh, like I was saying, Rob, if you bring everybody on the blitz and you sell out on the run, you're going to leave some vulnerabilities open back there in the secondary that sometimes. Case. That's true. Yeah, something has to give. But you also can't let them run it down your throat every play either. Yeah, that's, yeah, when you're playing a team that has a really strong running attack and you're having trouble stopping them, it puts you in a really difficult situation. It puts your secondary in a really tough spot too. The extra point is up and good for Sevier County. That's going to push the score to 14 to nothing with 14 seconds left in the first quarter. The Fighting Cox trail despite a pretty good first opening drive. Move the ball, move the ball inside the red zone. Couldn't convert any points on a blocked field goal. And Smoky Mountain has, uh, or I'm sorry, Sevier County <laughs> has, uh, has had their way <laughs> with Cock County on offense. Folks, uh, you know, there's sometimes in life when you have to make difficult decisions and put in difficult spots with the health and, of your loved ones. Uh, it's those times when we're, we're, we're really glad that people like Smoky Mountain Home Health and Hospice are there to make those times as easy as possible and to allow our loved ones to be with, with us and with their loved ones uh, during these most difficult times of life. So we thank them for being a sponsor and we thank them for uh, their continued support in our community and the love and the compassion that they continue to show. Smoky Mountain Home Health and Hospice, longtime sponsor of Friday Night Live. Uh, Cobb County will receive the kickoff again. We'll see if they squib it up to the up man. Looks like they're going to kick it deep this time. Yeah, it's a le legit kick and this time. And it's going to be taken by Stewart. He's up past the 20-yard uh, line, and he's going to be dropped shortly thereafter. All right, Rob, so we got to get some points here. Yeah, we're going to have to respond, Jack. I agree. Seven seconds left here in the first quarter. We have got to – we're getting ready to go into the second quarter again. You know, the second quarter has proven to be our strong spot. So this is a great opportunity for us to, to get back into this game. All right, Cox take the field. We're here on senior night at Larry Williams Stadium, Newport, Tennessee. Baylor Baxter looks over the defense, takes the snap, and he's going to keep this one right up the middle. He's got a little bit of running room. He's Baylor's executing the fake handoffs perfectly tonight. He is faking out the entire uh, Sevier County defense every time he does it. Food City. 1972, this Smoky Mountain secret has been serving at the best steaks this side of the Mississippi River. Welcome to the Grease Rack. Uh, these uh, cupcakes were donated by Food City in honor of Miss Jane Leto, her 90th birthday. She's an English teacher here at Cock County. I used to teach with her. Happy birthday, Miss Leto, and Food City, thank you for the cupcakes. Cheers. You want to see me get? You want to see me get dirty here? <laughs> Shout out to Miss Leto. Do uh, I have anything on me? No. no. <laughs> 90 years old. Happy birthday, Miss Loto. There she is there. Once a year, 
and wearing the big red uniform. That's a fighting cock for life right there. Yeah, she's on the jersey, she's wearing number 90, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, here in now the second quarter, Cock County is going to take the ball and hopefully move it up the field. Go ahead and give another shout out to our beloved sponsor, Rocky Top Pest Control. I've dealt with them personally many a times. I know they're a quality company. And once again, we'd like to thank you for watching Friday Night Live, presented by McSween McSween at Green Attorneys of Law and Newport Cinema 4. Baxter's got five wide receivers. He's going to throw this thing. He's looking. He's rolling. Still looking. And he's going to throw it, and he's going to throw it away into the Sevier County stands. Yeah, he didn't see anything, uh, so he wisely threw that one away. Baylor Baxter has shown flashes of brilliance tonight, Jack. He's a shifty quarterback, and he's got a great arm on him. But he's, a, he's shown himself to be a double threat tonight. I mean, he has thrown the ball like a laser at times. He's hit the long ball, and uh, he's also shown that uh, he can be a little, like you said, shifty, and he can get it on his feet. It's like we've got third down and four here. I think he may have been watching some Hendon Hooker game film. <laughs> GBO. All right, big third down here for the Cox. Baxter scours the defense, takes the snap, is going to run this thing to the left side, trying to cut the corner, and he makes a move on a guy, but he's going to be just shy of the first down. So this is going to be fourth and inches, and great ball security on that one. That, uh, that tackler came in, and his helmet hit right on the ball, but uh, he didn't, he didn't, uh, he kept his grip, so that was really well done by Baylor Baxter. Oh, he got it. Looks like they're going to give us the first down. Maybe that was a makeup call for that horrible spot earlier. Boy, no kidding. That was, that was awful. <laughs> So there's a Jeremy Faison first down. And the whistle blows this play dead before it can get off the ground. Baxter indicates that it is on the like Smoky Bears and it is offside. So that'll start us off with a first and five here. You know, you're talking about that call last uh, during that last drive. I mean, that should have been a first down. You see a call that bad, you think instead of cupcakes, we should give some of these guys carrots and have their eyes out a little bit. Politician and a comedian, Rob Mouse. Same skill set. <laughs> All right, Rob's hammering a cupcake. Baylor Baxter's <laughs> taking the snap. He's going to hand it off up the middle, and it looks like we're going to get stuff. Hey, He's there moving you go. It. Moving the pile. Moving the pile, keeping those legs driving. He got some help from the offensive line. That was a real, that was a, literally a team effort there. They moved the pile a good three yards after that first contact. That's what we're going to have to do, Jack. Yeah. We're going to have to keep we're going to have to keep the Bears guessing so that just as we can't commit to the run game, they can't commit to the passing game and expect that we're not going to run, be running the ball. We're going to have to have a balanced attack, and that's a good way to do it. Second down and three here. Baylor Baxter is going to fake, and he's going to run up the middle. He's got another Jeremy Faison first down, and he's still going. He's going to be in Smoky Bear, uh, course. yeah, Smoky Bear territory. Cross midfield. So we're moving the ball again, Rob. We got a little bit of momentum here. For a, as you said, Jack, for a Jeremy Faison first down. Great run by Brazen Stewart and another great run by Baylor Baxter. He's in the shotgun formation with four wide. He takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He throws a rifle. Nice. And it's caught. And that's yeah, going to be just showing a laser. That's Kendrick White on the catch, the senior. That was a bullet. That really was. And, and well caught, well handled, too. He caught that and uh, had a sure grip on it. Reminded me of Brett Favre there. Yeah, really. Baxter takes the snap and hands off. Looks like that Hazelwood. He's close to a Cock County first down. Looks like it's going to be third and short here for the Big Red. Speaking of getting into home territory, you don't want any pests getting to your home territory this fall as the weather changes. So why not give the folks at Rocky Top Pest Control and play a prevent defense to keep them from getting into your end zone? Woo! All right. Hey, like that. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we have you, Rob <laughs> All right, third down and three, maybe, maybe four, three and a half. 
quarterback takes a snap. He's going to throw it. His leg and He makes a move. He's down inside the Breaks 20. Three He's down inside the 15, almost to the 10 yard line. He, got, gonna he be. got a good 20 yards after contact on that one, Jack. Way to go. Lake and France has a Jeremy Faison first down, and we're knocking on the door now. Lincoln France putting on a show for the fans tonight. I mean, that was just a great pass, great catch, and the, the performance after the catch. That was That's maximum effort right there, Jack. Uh, Baylor Baxter's dialed in. Well, and, you know, and we got to credit this offensive line because he couldn't be making those passes if he didn't have time to do it. First and 10 from the 10-yard line. Baxter's going to run this one. He doesn't have much way to go, but he's going to bounce it to the outside, and he's going to score. Uh, it's coming back. I think there was a little hold on the corner. There is a flag on the play down there. Let me see that calls for another bottle. Cupcake. <laughs> Usually when you see a marker in that vicinity, it does mean it's coming back. Yeah, I think I saw it. I think um, as he was turning the corner, there was a little bit of a jersey grab there. You can't do that, can you, Rob? No, you can't. Just like that. <laughs> can't do that. So that'll get you flagged every time. <laughs> and if you keep doing it to me, it's going to get you flagged. <laughs> <laughs> Whether on or off the field, it's not cool. It's not cool, Jerry. All right, so that's going to push us back almost outside of the red zone to about the 17-yard line. You want to finish that cupcake? <laughs> <laughs> it's all you. <laughs> Rob's celebrating senior night here. <laughs> well, it was my birthday last week. There's 14 seniors. Rob wants 14 cupcakes. First thing goal for your final time. All right, now we got first and goal outside the 15-yard line. Baxter rolling, throwing to the end zone. It's going to be overthrown. No, it's not. Boy, did he catch did that he, in bounds? Was he inside? Oh, just a foot outside the boundaries. What a throw and what a catch over the shoulder. Tough to see on that far side, but it looks like he was unable to drag that foot. So that's going to be incomplete. It's going to be second down. Second down and goal now. Another great throw from Baxter. Baxter in the shotgun again. Two wide receivers to the right. He's got an H back, got a tail back, got one wide receiver to the left. And he takes the snap. He's going to throw to the right side. He's got a man. It's caught. And he's moving down the field. He's inside. Or they're about the five yard line. You know, we're showing we can move the ball and we can we've shown that we can stop them on defense. We can play with these guys. I think we're seeing the benefits of having a veteran senior quarterback. We've got a lot of game experience. Baylor backs are really throwing the ball. Yeah, let's not forget this offensive line that's making all kinds of daylight and uh, make, getting all kinds of time for Baxter to do what he needs to do and, and the rest of these, uh, the rest of these uh, uh, running backs and, and the receivers. All right, so we've got this one marked at the seven yard line. It's third and goal. Cock County needs a touchdown here. Man moves across the formation. Baxter throws to the end zone. It's oh, what caught. a throw, what a catch. Touchdown! What a touchdown, Big Wow! Brazen Stewart on the catch. Six points. Brazen Surehand Stewart pulls that one down with, I mean, he was covered too. That was a perfect throw, perfect catch. You can't do any better than that, Jack. Baylor Baxter on fire, baby. Putting on a show. And now it's a one score game. Steinbacher in to attempt the extra point. And that's exactly what we needed, Rob. We needed an answer. We sure did. Here's the kick. It's up. It is good. So Cock County cuts the deficit. You know, Jack, we can, like I said, we can play with these guys. We are not outclassed by this team. We can compete with these guys. We can beat them. I agree with you, Rob. And it's just now, hopefully, the guys in the black jerseys, they feel like they can beat them, too. All right, so seven minutes and 41 seconds left in the second quarter. Sevier County up on Cock County by a score of 14 to seven. Go ahead and give a quick shout out to one of our great sponsors, Newport Cinema Four. 
They're one of our presenters tonight, Jack. Uh, we've got the Newport Cinema 4 and the Sweeney, Sweeney Green Attorneys at Law. Uh, we want to thank them for being our presenters for this broadcast tonight. And uh, folks, for uh, Newport Cinema 4, uh, the holidays are coming up. Going to be a lot of great family entertainment, and this is a great family place to go. They just like to remind everybody that the holidays around the corner of Super Cinema 4 would like to tell you a few of their favorite things. We like fresh, hot popcorn, hot chocolate, cuddly kittens, Dodge Challengers, and hot dogs, and dogs of all kinds. We also like blockbusters on the big screen, some great smoky mountains in the fall, good country cooking, fishing, Dolly Parton, and be sure to add us to your list of favorite things this holiday season. I misread that the first time. here to the Smoky Bears. Need a good defensive stand here, get the ball back, tie it up before halftime. Well, this is the second quarter. This has historically been our quarter this season. That's proven to be true tonight. There's some of the big red fans. Student section down there on senior night. Hey, Chris. Taking Chris. Oh, yeah, right. They're motivated. They're cheering on the big red. We've got a great student section, Jack. Couldn't be a more beautiful night here in Newport, Tennessee. You're exactly right, especially for a senior night. All right, the kick is up and away. It's a boomer. Nice kick. That's going to result in a touchback. You know, that, I find that's always a great sign of momentum is that kickoff. If your kicker booms it into the end zone, that means he's a little hyped because the team is hyped. You've got momentum. Uh, you got some leg into that one. He sure did. All right, the Smokey Bears have had a lot of success on offense on the ground, not so much on the air. They'll take over here after the touchback at the, their own 20-yard line. Ready, Jacob. Take it, Jacob. Christian Hoffman, the quarterback. Ready, Chris. Takes the snap. Chris. He's going to hand off up the oh, middle. Oh, right there. Hammered behind the line. That's going to be a loss on the play. Yeah, Who was that that delivered the boot? Carson DeVotai just lowered the hammer on the running back. That's how you get it done, folks. Tighten up on it. So now we're going to have second, and it looks like about 12. Ready, Jacob. Take it, Jacob. That's now gonna they're in the, the shotgun. Four wide receivers. Hoffman takes the snap. He's going to look in. And it's going to be Pick. intercepted. Lincoln Francis headed towards the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown! Big red! Woo! Wow, Jack. Senior Lake in France takes that one back to the house, baby. The seniors are having themselves a game tonight, Jack. That's going to cut the deficit down to 14 to 13. I don't know a lot, but I know one thing. The uh, Bears did not see this coming when they came into Larry Williams Stadium tonight. Well, look what you had on that drive, Rob. We stopped the run. They have to go to the air. We pick it off, take it to the house, turn over. Yeah, you put them in third and long, and that takes away one of their strongest parts of their game, and they have to adapt, and that plays into our strength. Big game so far from Lake and France. Steinbacher on to kick the extra point. It is up, and it's right through the uprights. We've got a tie ball game here, baby. Folks, we got a game. Big Red showing up tonight on senior night. You know, that reminded me of when the Vols played for the national championship against uh, Florida State, and uh, Dwayne Goodrich caught that pass and ran it in for the pick six. It was the exact same play back in 98. Lake and France jumped that route like he had the play call. He's going to remember that for the rest of his life, Jack. That was outstanding. Waltz right into the end zone. The Cox have tied the game. There's seven minutes and seven seconds left in the second quarter here on Friday Night Live. Well, what did we say? The second quarter has been our quarter, and they have come alive. How about another defensive stand from the Iron Curtain? Yeah. Yeah, we are starting to get these guys figured out. And uh, we've definitely seized the momentum. We scored 14 unanswered points in in one quarter. Yeah. In seven minutes, <laughs> half a quarter. Great play on offense, great play on defense. Big Red Machine is well oiled. You know, speaking of shows, if you want to go see a great show, go watch a movie at Newport Cinema 4. They've got four big screens. You can choose any one you want. All right, Big Red set to kick it off. 
Pretty Chris Steinbacher. Boom, the last one. Let's see where this one goes. It's another good one. And it's going to be another touchback, and the Smoky Bears are going to take it from the 20 yard line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this team is this team is hot now. They realize they can't, you know, not only can they play these guys, they can beat these guys. All right. Defense takes the field. Now seven minutes left in the second quarter. <laughs> If I had to guess, I would think we're going to see a heavy dose of the run game here. I would think so. Got three men in the backfield. Cock County's got everybody in the box. And they're going to throw again. He's going to try to throw he's his He's going to but he's got coverage. And it's a great coverage by, guess who, Lake and France. Wow. Lake and France continuing to impress tonight. It will be man to man out there on an island, and he played great out there. On the island, he used that sideline as another defender and just blocked that, blocked that receiver out. There was nowhere for him to go. Good stuff there. Going to be second and ten now for the Smoky Bears from their own 20-yard line. You know, speak, looking at how these how these seniors have been playing, this is a testimony to what uh, Coach Dox has been doing. He's developing his players. And we got a pre-snap whistle here and a penalty marker. Blow the play dead, and it's going to be a false start on the Smoky Bears. Going to move them back five yards. All the momentum right now is oh, clad yeah. in big red. It sure is. Big Mo is dressed in big red. Yeah, we're starting to see miscues on the, on the part of the Bears now instead of on the red. All right, second and 15 now. Quarterback takes a snap and throws a little screen pass. And he's going to get it, kick it out to the left side. He's going to have a gain of about 10 there. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be third and five coming up. Short pass there from Christian Hoffman. Chris, we're on you. Junior quarterback for the Smoky Bears. Holding on the Smoky Bears. All right, big third down here. Zip. The same. I was just informed that our office coordinator, Coach Langan, has left to go have a baby with his wife. So please remember them. Please remember them and their family. All right, it looks like they've moved them back towards the end zone. Not really sure what the infraction is here. Having got a we'll clear indication. Uh, it looks like it may have been a holding call during the play. That's that's the only thing I could think of that would have backed it up like that. Well, we've just received word that one of the uh, Cock County coaches has had to leave the game because his wife is in labor. So congratulations. Casey Reagan's wife is in labor. So folks, uh, congratulations to Casey. And prayers are with his wife and his, and his uh, newborn baby. Magical things happen on Friday night, Rob. It's one of those nuts, Jack. Second and 20 now. Quarterback takes a snap. He's looking to throw. He steps up in the pocket and throws it deep. There's a big red dis oh, uh, defender so back there. Close. And it goes right through his hands. But a great coverage, great Henry, defense for the big red. Henry Tucker, the sophomore, was there. And uh, it just went right through his hands. But uh, he guaranteed that no none of the offensive players were going to be there to catch that either. So still a good play. All right. So third down and 20 now. Cop County would love to force a punt from the end zone here. I'm sensing that uh, that Sevier County is off their game plan a little bit. They're having to resort to some things they didn't think they're going to have to. No kidding. Third down and a mile. Hoffman in the shotgun. He takes the snap. And it looks like they're going to hand it off to the left side. He's going to have a little bit of a game, but it's not going to be anywhere near enough oh. for a first down. It's and the ball like comes out, but it went right out of bounds. Staying on fourth down and ten ish. <laughs> and I see the special teams unit coming onto the field. They're going to punt this football. Yeah, it's fourth down and a long 11, Jack. Uh, hey, get, get me on the fire, Jack. Kendrick White is deep to receive this punt. Now, here's where our guys are hot. they got to play it cool. They can't, they can't get any penalties. They're going to give them a first down. But, you know, we got to watch the fake as well. Punter back for the Smoky Bears. He jumps and gets it. It's almost, almost blocked. blocked. A wobbly he might have got a punt. piece of that. Drops and takes a good Smoky Bear bounce. And it's going to end up at about midfield. Yeah, Big Red's going to take over at the 50-yard line. So great field position for the Fighting Cox. Oh, yeah. Who was it that, got a, that almost got a piece there? Is that number 30? I think that, folks, that might have been Carson Hobson that almost blocked that kick. But what he did was he forced the trajectory of that kick to go almost straight into the air. So almost as good as a block. 
All right, Baxter and company going to take over at midfield, first and 10, six minutes and 13 seconds left in this first half here on Friday Night Live. Baxter in the shotgun, three wide receivers. He's going to fake to the running back and throw to the right side. It's caught, uh, but the wide receiver is going to be wrapped up. Oh, no, it's still going, but it looks like he's going to struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage, if that. That was Brazen Stewart on the catch. Looks like they're going to lose a couple on that one, but still, nice catch, great effort on his part. He almost broke it free. Brazen Stewart playing well tonight. Baylor Baxter playing well tonight. Loss of two on the play on that little screen pass. It's going to be second and 12. Cock County now at their own 48. Jack, if these guys play any better, I'm not going to have enough voice left to cheer for the balls tomorrow night. I can't join you on that one. <laughs> Quarterback takes the snap. He's going to hang it out to the wide or to the oh. running back. Excuse me. Not much doing there for the big red. Hazelwood. Hazelwood. Yeah. Tried to get around the corner there and never could. He just ran out of room. Big shout out to my favorite one of our sponsors tonight, McSween, McSween and Green, attorneys at law. Go check them out for all your legal needs downtown. Didn't you used to know those guys? <laughs> I know a thing or two about them. Third and 12 for the Big Red. Baxter looking, looking. Got all, all day. kinds of time. He's pointing, and now he's going to have to throw it. It's caught. Wow. Great and that's a first down. Orrin Hazelwood. Orrin Hazelwood for a Jeremy Faison. First down. Big throw on third and long there. Baxter had all day to throw, had to roll out of the pocket, made a great throw on the run. You know, when it comes to your legal advice, you don't want to get caught in a third and long situation. You want to get that first down. So you want to talk to McSween, McSween and Green, attorneys at law, to get that first down and to punch it into the end zone every time. Uh, all right, Baxter throws again. This oh. time it's going to be dropped by Hazelwood. Thanks to the hands of Hazelwood, it will be second down and 10. Another bullet from Baylor Baxter. Yeah, well, he's really, he's really dialed in tonight. He's on target. For a while. He could throw a ball through a concrete wall tonight. Uh, follow the play still, follow the play. Second and ten now for the Big Red. Inside Smokey Bear territory. Oh, no. uh, I he must have ate just like some raw hamburger meat or something. He's mean tonight. He's a man on a mission here on senior night. Five wide receiver set for Baxter. He looks. He takes the snap. He drops. He's got all day again. Great, man. They're going to call holding, I believe, on that one. But Baylor Baxter rolls out and throws. It's off the hands of the wide receiver. No penalty on the on the play there. Yeah, honestly, I think that might have been on the defender. Uh, the defender actually was holding the offensive lineman down for some reason. Usually when you see a tackle down there on the offensive line, somebody's going to call for something. Well, they, I mean, it, it's kind of... The defensive, the defensive lineman was actually pushing down on the offensive lineman. I'm not sure what the purpose of that was. Yeah, it's almost like they could have called him for a personal foul there. Yeah, really, unnecessary roughness. Nonetheless, it's third and ten for the Fighting Cox. Down inside Smoky Bear territory at their 36-yard line. Baxter in the shotgun. Three wide receivers. He rolls to the left. He's looking to throw. He's going to throw. He's got Lake and France, oh. and it's broken up at the last second there. France making contact with the defender right as the ball got there. He almost still got a handle on that one, though. Pretty good play by Justin Walker there on the defense to break that play up. Another good throw from Baxter. Had it right on Lake and France's hands. They couldn't bring it in. It's going to be fourth down. Fourth and ten. Looks like Cock County is going to bring out their punting team. You know, I've been impressed with the protection that Baylor Baxter's had tonight. He has had time to throw the ball. Yeah, he has. And that, you know, historically, that's something we really haven't seen. Punt formation on. It's a little bit of a funky formation here for the Fighting Cox. Everybody lined up to the right side. Not sure what this is all about. Steinbacher is in the punt. He stands at midfield. He's going to take the snap. It's going to be a fake. They're going to throw it. It's caught. And it's going to be a first down. How about that? Inside the 15-yard line. Jeremy Faison first down. And Baylor Baxter on the catch there on the fake punt. What? I mean, you saw that line up. You're like, surely this is a fake, right? <laughs> but they made it look like they're going to go the other way. That was really well executed. 
Great call there by head coach Scotty Dykes. Gutsy call. Exactly. You, you know, you can't make a call like that unless you believe in your guys, and he obviously believes in these guys. So that was well done. Uh, okay. Great Baylor Baxter gets the first down reception. Now the Cox have it at the 15-yard line, first and 10. They're going to hand it off here, right up the middle. Hazelwood, he's down inside the 10-yard line. Nice, nice piece of running there. Picks up about five or six. Keeps the defense honest. Orin Hazelwood on the carry. Second down and about six or five. Second down and five here on the 15-yard line. I'm sorry, the 10-yard line. Jack, I heard a rumor you're going to do some halftime karaoke. <laughs> I wouldn't count on it. I heard a rumor you're going to eat some cupcakes at halftime. <laughs> now that's true. Baxter takes oh. a snap and it's over his head. He's going to pick it up, though. He's got a chance to get away with it. He's going to throw it away. And he had a man I don't in see the any area. penalty flags. So it looks like a great play by Baylor Baxter to save it from yeah, a big heads loss. Up play. Wow. Yeah, Orrin Hazelwood was, was fairly close to where that ball was. Baxter's having a little bit of oh, trouble. there's a flag coming out now. And there is a penalty marker on the play, and they are going to call intentional are you kidding grounding me? on Cock County. Looks like he got it past the line of scrimmage, and there was a man in the area. And now it looks like we're going to get another penalty flag thrown. I think that one might be for mouthing off to the referee. Well, you deserved it. crowd is not happy. I don't know if you can hear that on the stream. But a lot of grumbling. Okay, for one, he's outside the box. For the second... Christine, Christine, go Jacob. Let me see some of this pistol. Yeah, my understanding is if, if you throw it away, you have to get past the line of scrimmage. I think the ref said zoom in on, zoom in on. grounding, and then he said he's going to take a nap because he didn't see it because he was sleeping. If I'm reading the body language correctly, Jack. Are you ready, Jacob? Take a break. All right, so while they sort this out, it looks like it's going to be third down and a, really a mile. Just when we were knocking on the door, Rob, ready to take the lead, a couple big mistakes. I mean, I don't see how they can uh, – I, I mean – that's that's I mean that's quick. They've got these guys backed up. It's going to be what third down, third down and third Gatlinburg down to go. Come on now. Third down and forty now. I mean, of course the guy's going to express his displeasure at a call like that. My goodness, I don't know what we're going to run here. Baylor Baxter in the shotgun, Hazelwood in motion across the formation. Baxter takes the snap. He's going to throw this thing deep. He's going deep. He's going for Stewart. Okay, and he we may have drawn a flag. He did. I think that's going to be pass interference. That's going to be a first down big red. Wow, what a call there. It might have been a makeup call, but we'll take it. We'll see what the official indicates. Surely it'll be pass interference on the defense. We can, we would hope so. <laughs> I mean, he did get mugged a little bit. Yeah. I think he may have got away with one of his cleats. Yeah, I was going to say, you better check and see if he's still got his wallet. Yeah. <laughs> he took his milk money on that one. So I do believe it is a pass interference yeah, they're the walking Smoky it Bears. That will be an automatic first down for the Big Red. Beautiful. And that's what you need on third and 40. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some kind of miracle. <laughs> okay, so it actually is still third down. It's we do get 15 yards. It's a 15 yard. Isn't that not an automatic first down? I mean, ah, that was my understanding, but apparently not. I'm le I'm learning tonight. <laughs> so that's going to leave us with about a third down and 25. Still got a long way to go, and now so, we're in no man's land. So now we're just third down in Pittman Center. <laughs> Baxter in the shotgun again. He's going to roll to the right this time. He's looking. He's looking, he's got a little bit of pressure. He steps up in the pocket, he's gonna run this mm -hmm. thing. He's at the 30, 25, makes a man miss. He's down to the 20, not gonna be enough for a first down. Uh, not we, hardly. We may have a holding call, yep. Yep, and we have another penalty on the big red here. Holding penalty is gonna back us up even further. Now the rest getting a little flag happy in the last sequence of plays here. Yeah, this drive was looking promising. It's been totally derailed by penalty flags. <clears throat> All right, so now it's going to be third down and I don't know, Rob. Third down and <laughs> you, your guess is as good as mine. 
Strawberry Plains, we'll go with that. Yeah. Third down in Strawberry Plains. Cock County has it on their, well, on the Smoky Bear. 44 yard line. I can only count up to 30 by five, so once it gets past <laughs> that, uh... we've got two minutes and 30 seconds left in this first half. Cock County and Sevier County are tied up. Cock County down 14 to nothing early. They came all the way back. Baxter's going to throw this ball. He's looking, he's rolling, he's got pressure, and he's still up. He's got a man, but oh. it's overthrown. And well, so, you know, that, that's a tough. <laughs> he was running for his life and throwing yeah. across the field, across his body. So that's a yeah, tough. That's a tough. He ask. still almost made that pass. Injured Smoky Mount, or I'm sorry, a Severe County player on the field. So we will break for that. All right, Rob. Well. Probably going to have to punt this football and yeah, play some so. defense. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, we're going to have to. Yeah, Jack, uh, so what are your thoughts on the game so far? I think we're showing a lot of fight, a lot of promise. I mean, a lot of great things. Baylor Baxter's playing great, throwing the ball great. Got some guys on defense that are playing great. Lake in France mm -hmm. really showing up. I mean, I don't know what more you can ask for right now. We're playing yeah. great on defense, great on offense. Exactly. Yeah, you're not going. They're, they're not playing a perfect game, but no, nobody's asking them to play a perfect game. They've shown some flashes of brilliance. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, thank some of our sponsors while we're uh, we're in the middle of this delay. Uh, Grease Rack uh, again, celebrating 50 years of service to our community and uh, great food. Uh, if you want to go down there, like I said, what it, uh, Wednesday night is Burger Night. We go down there quite regularly on Burger Night. And uh, they also have a prime rib steak, you name it, ribs, you name it. Same thing with the woodshed, Smoky Mountain Home Health and Hospice. Uh, we want to thank them for the service they provide to this community in very difficult times. They make things as a lot easier for, uh, for a lot of families who are going through very, very tough times. Don't forget Rocky Top Pest Control and Jeremy Faison. Uh, we've had a lot of big red Jeremy Faison first downs tonight. We sure have. And also I want to thank the, our, our presenting sponsors. Uh, this, uh, this broadcast is presented by Newport Cinema 4 and McSween McSween and Green Attorneys of Law. What are your thoughts so far through almost uh, 30 minutes of football, Rob? Uh, I'm impressed. I think uh, the Big Red are, are playing really good football tonight. I think I think they've got some calls that have gone against them that I vehemently disagree with. I will be writing a strongly worded letter, uh, possibly tomorrow morning, um, that somebody needs to. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've had some calls to go against us. But I think overall we've played well on offense, defense. We've got our running game starting to starting to come to fruition a little bit. The passing game, Baylor Baxter has been extremely impressive. Yeah. And and I just want to keep pointing out that that wouldn't be possible without his offensive line. This is something a much improved offensive line oh, yeah. than what we've seen in, in oh, years yeah. past. Uh, he's had time to, to do what he needs to do. And the defense. I mean, we got a pick six, and we've stopped we've stopped them on several drives. So uh, we're doing they're doing what they need to do. It's 14-14 when we're in this game. Yeah, we are. I don't think anybody would have would have guessed that going into this, except for us. I think we, if you would have asked Scotty Dykes if he would take 14 to 14 going into halftime, he would have taken it in a heartbeat. Well, of course, you and me, Jack. It's we're going to say Big Red by 90. So, <laughs> all right, the Big Red are going to punt. Steinbacher nice punt. puts one down in there. It's going to roll into the end zone barely for a touchback. Oh. Really good punt. Really excellent punt. Yeah, if that had one one less yard on it, that'd have been on the one. But uh, great effort to get down there and try to swat that back into the field of play. Steinbacher kicking well tonight, the senior. He really is. Yeah, we need to recognize what a great job he's doing tonight. All right, Smoky Bears are going to take over at their own 20-yard line. They got two minutes and ten seconds before this half ends. Speaking of drives, if you want to go for a drive, and you want to get to wherever you want to go in a hurry and, and do so in style and comfort, go visit the folks down at Stinnett Automotive. Whatever you're looking for, they've got it, and they will make sure that you go away happy and provide you service after the sale. Christian Hoffman at quarterback. He takes the snap. He's going to run it up the middle. He's got a little bit of room. He's got a first down and more. He's going to push it up outside the 35-yard line. Big gain there for a first down. You know, our, our offense, uh, or excuse me, our defense, it's been a little bit since they've been on the field. So uh, if we didn't have so many guys playing both ways, uh, you know, that, that may be a, a telling factor going into the fourth quarter. That's true. First it's, and ten now. Especially at the, the level of effort these guys are putting out. I'm, I'm just so proud of these guys. 
Hoffman in the pistol formation. He's going to hand it off up the middle again. We got a man on him, but he's going to break a tackle. He's still going. He's got a first down. He's out past the 45-yard line. That young man runs like he's mad at the grass. Really good run there from Malachi Pate for Sevier County. Another first down. Got out of bounds there to stop the clock with a minute and 54 seconds left in the second quarter. I think it's pretty clear who the workhorse on this team is. All right, first down, Smokey Bears in the shotgun formation. Three wide receivers to the left. He looks over there and throws. It's a little bit high, but it's caught. He's going to run it up the sideline a little bit and then get a gain of about seven or eight there on first down. That's a good job on the receiver's part, cutting up the field as soon as that ball was in his hands. High throw there. He brought it down and got it upfield. Looks like he stepped out a little earlier than what we thought, so it's going to be second and about five. Second down and five. Hoffman in the shotgun. Cock County brings the blitz. They run it up the middle again. It's going to be close to a first down. Not sure where they're going to mark it. <laughs> Looks like they're going to mark him down just short, so it'll be third and short. It's time for the defense to bow up here with about a minute and a half left. Would like to go into halftime tied up here. Yeah, we could use another one of those big pops in the backfield right about now, or pick six. Third down in inches now for Sevier County. And the shotgun again. Quarterback's going to look to throw. They took away the screen pass. We got pressure. Throws it to the sideline, and it's going to be incomplete. So it's going to be fourth down now. Yeah, I thought he might have had that. Looks like he caught it, but he may have been out of bounds. Or, or, or the defender. I thought we had an interception there. Defense is feisty tonight. I'd like to remind everybody that uh, this is uh, broadcast tonight by HMG. That's Horizon Media Group. Uh, if you have any uh, digital media needs or commercial needs or want to promote your business or your community. Oh! Oh, wow! Ball's on the ground. The ball is out. We got a big stop. Who's got the football? No signal yet. You have it. Cox Cox County, County has the Cox ball. County. Wow, these guys are coming up big tonight, Jack. Carson Devotai got in there and recovered that ball. For the he, Big Red, it's going to be first and ten. Carson Devotai got in the backfield and just decleated the quarterback as he got the ball. He almost, he almost got the snap. Devotai blasted him there. He just created all kinds of havoc in the backfield and created an opportunity for the Big Red now with a minute and eight seconds to go. That you put an exclamation point on this first half of football. Another turnover forced by Cock County. And now we're going to try to move it up the field and score. We've got it at our own 43-yard line, first and 10. Baxter looks to the sideline. Hazelwood to his left in the backfield, three wide receivers. He takes the snap and hands it to Hazelwood. He's up the middle. He spins. And he's got a little bit of a gain there up past the 45-yard line. You know, speaking of big plays, if you want to score a big play for your company or your community or whatever you have going on, contact the folks at Horizon Media Group. That's HMG. You can find them on Facebook. And uh, they are our broadcasters for tonight. So if you like the quality of what they're doing here, they can do just as well for you. All right, Baxter takes the snap. He's going to throw the sideline. It's caught. A little bit short of the first down, but he's out of bounds. It's going to stop the clock with 40 seconds left. Good job getting out of bounds. Uh, Cock County's the, the Big Reds moving the ball. Hey, this is the second takeaway they've had in a quarter. Yeah. All right, uh, yeah, in a quarter. Brazen Stewart on the catch there. It's going to make it third and two inside Smoky Bear territory. Thinking about a deep shot here, Rob. What do you think? I agree. Baxter takes the snap. He does look to throw. He is going to throw long. And he's got Brazen Stewart. Boy, there was a lot of contact out there. No penalty flag. It's like uh, apparently the Stewart ref sent his, sent his flag out for dry cleaning because it, if he'd had it on him, I'm sure it would be on the ground right now. Wow, Brazen Stewart looks like he had his man beat. I mean, things got fairly intimate going down the sideline, I would say. To say the least. That's going to make it fourth down for the Big Red. And it looks like the special teams unit is coming out on the field. They've got this funky formation again. Last time we ran a fake, don't expect to see another one here. At least not the same fake we saw. We've, these, uh, these guys have shown they can be pretty wily tonight. 35 seconds left in this first half. Cock County tied with Sevier County at 14. And this is another weird formation here. It looks like the punter. 
Steinbacher is moving over to the left. Moving in motion. Not sure what's going on here. We'll wait and see what Scotty Dykes has cooked up. We may be waiting for it. Oh, there he goes. And it looks like they're going to do a little bit of a pooch kick here. Not uh -oh. bad. I think they may be looking for somebody on the uh, on the Bears to make contact with the ball. Pretty good punt there. Lands inside the 20-yard line. Going to yeah. give Smoky, the Smoky Bears a long field. <clears throat> that was a good kick. So they're going to take over with about 30, 29 seconds to go in the half. Right. All right. Well, the, the big red defense has been able to make some big plays when they needed it, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And I, I would expect <clears throat> Sevier County to kind of just run this ball around the clock out here. Going to halftime, they have not had any momentum uh, recently. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Given that we'll get a sense of their state of mind, I guess uh, based on the play calls that they choose here. Their quarterback is in the shotgun. He is going to hand off up the middle, and we wrap him up pretty quickly. May have been a gain of one there. Well, Twenty seconds now, left in the half, and the clock's running. Now. Yeah, they're not going to stop the clock, so and they don't have any sense of urgency. Looks like they're going to take this one into the locker room with a tie game. So instead of going for broke, it seems the uh, Sevier County Bears are going to play it a little bit safe going into the half. Yeah, they're not even they're not down going to... three, two, one. That's going to be the end of the first half. Your score here on Friday night live, Cock County 14 and Sevier County 14. Fans, remember we are going to have a band performance here by the uh, Sevier County High School Band. And after that, it will be your Red Regiment Marching Band following that. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll see you on the other side, folks. 1972, this Smoky Mountain secret has been serving at the best steaks this side of the Mississippi River. Welcome to the Grease Rack. Folks, again, we'd like to we'd like to remind you that this broadcast is by HMG Horizon Media Group. Uh, they uh, are masters of digital marketing, and uh, they can provide pretty much anything that you want to do for your business, your community. If you like the quality of this show and the quality of these commercials, these have all been produced by uh, the Horizon Media Group, and they are a local hometown family-owned business, and uh, they're. They were uh, born right here in uh, Newport, so in Cock County. So uh, uh, if you have anything that you, your digital media needs, social media, they do it all, folks. They can create the content. They can post the content. They are, they are full service. We can talk about our other sponsors while we're at the halftime break here. The uh, Grease Rack, uh, again, celebrating 50 years of excellent service and outstanding food and just being a, a true landmark in our community. Uh, the Woodshed Restaurant, uh, they are an outstanding place to eat. Again, and they are they have been around for several years now and they are open Thursdays through Saturday. And uh, if you want to go down just like them and the Grease Rack both, you can't go wrong. These are two of the best places to eat this side of the Mississippi. And that counts if you go all the way around the world. So it's really both sides of the Mississippi. So we'd also like to thank our, our presenters. This, this uh, broadcast is presented to you by Newport Cinema 4. The holidays are around the corner. To The holidays are around the corner, and so are the Newport Cinema 4 would like to tell you about a few of our favorite things. We like fresh, hot popcorn, hot chocolate, cuddly kittens, Dodge Challengers, and dogs of all kinds, and balls of all kinds. We also like the blockbusters on the big screen, the Smoky Mountains in the fall, good country cooking, fishing, and Dolly Parton. 
Be sure to add us to your list of favorite things this holiday season. And also presented to you by McSween, McSween & Green, Attorneys at Law. Uh, if you're going to be buying property, selling property, just any kind of, kind of legal needs, give them a call. They, uh, they can do it all. Also, our sponsor, Rocky Top Pest Control, as uh, the weather starts to change and the critters go to get into your house, uh, give them a call to just uh, get ahead of that and make sure that uh, it's better to prevent the problem than to try to solve it. So uh, give them a call, let them come up and give you a good evaluation, and uh, they'll tell you what you need to do, and they can take care of you. We'll now enjoy our halftime entertainment.
the staff includes Haley Smith and Jessica Kopik, Brad Martin and Sean McCune, and Donna Huffaker. Band leadership includes Gabe Gon, Elijah Ailey, Ray Gonzalez, Turner Wade, Angel Morales, Ava May, Shelby Arwood, Jojo Ackley, Christian Hernandez, Joe Mintz, Kyrie Smith, Nathaniel Calkin, Madeline Grizzle, Alex Hawks, Llewyn Davis, Diego Hayes, Jasmine Palmer, Presley Lewis, Silas Good, Brady Jude, Kieran Miz, and Kylie Moreno. Once again, put your hands together for your Pride of the Smoky Mountains of Sevier County High School Smoky Bear Marching Band. To welcome to the field the Cock County Red Regiment Marching Band. Tonight's performance is entitled Lights. Selections include John Adams' Short Ride in a Fast Machine, Lux Arute by Eric Whitaker, Tom Walker's Leave a Light On, Blinded by the Light, made famous by Manfred Mann's Earth Band, and The Weekend's Blinding Lights. Our drum major is Samara Kassab. Band captain is Jody Vaughn. Percussion captains are Isaiah Walton and Lexi Barrett. Guard captains are Macy Hale and Dixie Norton. The soloists tonight are Sean Turpin and Jody Vaughn. The Red Regiment is under the direction of Kathy Sotelo, Travis Hicks, and Neil Graves. Color guard instructors are Ashlyn Meese McCall, and Taylor Henderson. Drill and music arrangements are by Travis Hicks. We hope you enjoy tonight's performance of Light by the CCHS Red Regiment Marching Band. <laughs>
scientific wonder. It can be a source of hope, a light in the darkness, guiding like a lighthouse. <laughs> no man left behind. I love you, man. <laughs> We're in this together. I don't know what I was thinking. You're right. <laughs> Flowing walks. I haven't got a haircut since last Mr. time we did the game. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've had too many cupcakes, though. This cupcake. It's a beautiful night here in Newport, Tennessee, in Cock County. A great night for football, a great night for senior night. And uh, the Fighting Cocks are really putting on a show for the hometown tonight, Arthur Jack. Beautiful night, beautiful game so far. We're uh, getting ready to kick off here for the second half. Cock County tied with Sevier County at 14 apiece. 
Well, you know, we talked about how Cock County is a uh, second quarter team, and that's proven to be the case. Uh, Cock County has uh, came back and scored two unanswered, 14 unanswered points in the second quarter. Yeah, really resilient. You know, a lot of times we see these games and Cock County gets down, they make a few mistakes, and they're out of the game. Tonight, yeah. not the case. Exactly. They've shown some resilience tonight that's, that has been uh, just really impressive and, and honestly refreshing to see. Uh, they've had some miscues, but just like the Volunteers this year, they've really they've really overcome those, and they've stayed in this game. Not just in this game, I mean, they've tied it up. Yeah. And they have the momentum. Yeah, and everything's going right right now for the Big Red. Well, we're here talking with uh, the uh, owner and CEO of uh, Horizon Media Group, Rob Mathis. So uh, tell us a little bit about the broadcast and what this means to you. Yeah, so uh, really this broadcast is really just a passion project. Um, really, it's something that I'm very passionate about, having played football here, having seen the impact of Cock County football games growing up. I remember coming, and I was actually just thinking as we were swapping batteries down there, I was like, I remember running around this track, and it, like back then it seemed like that track was miles long. Like going to the other side of the track was like going to another country, you know, away from your you know, your parents over here on the stands or whatever. Um, so you, you really get to experience your first little bit of independence here as a little kid. Uh, and then whenever you come out here and play under the lights for the first time, you really get to experience uh, kind of coming out as, as a man. You know, you're coming out here and, and you perform and you play a sport that you love um, and the community rallies behind you. It really is a great symbol for what Cock County can be when everybody's together. Uh, Cock County football is very near and dear to my heart, and uh, so that's kind of why we do this. It's a way to support the community, support, support the football team. I also take great pride in the quality that we try to put out there. Um, you know, a lot of times Cock County can get a bad rap, but I think it's incredibly important for us to have something that we can point to and say, hey, this is something we do right. This is something we do better than some other people. Uh, we can take pride in the production that we put out there, so that's another personal point for me. And honestly, a little self-indulgent. I just enjoyed being back down there on the field under the lights. Like the, I was walking out there, I was like, dude, the smells. I was like, that's something you kind of forget about. But the drums and yeah, yeah. And you're just like, you kind of get your, you know, your juice pumping. Then my old defensive coordinator, Matt Morris, was down there, and he said, hey, and I was like, yeah, I'm trying to get me some reps. <laughs> Speaking of reps, Rob is a little moss. He's not going to tell you. He not only did he play football here at Cobb County, he was a middle linebacker. Was an all-conference middle linebacker. Yeah, I tackled a couple people out there uh, every once in a while, but um, yeah, it was. It's fun, and it's fun being back out here, but really, it's all about the community. Um, you know, I, I take pride of where I come from. Um, you know, we've had great success. We've been extremely blessed with the business that we have, uh, and we serve all of East Tennessee, but it will all be something special right here in Cock County. Well, we thank you for uh, being here, for putting this for putting this show on for the for the people here in East Tennessee and Cock County, but also East Tennessee as, at large as a whole, and uh, just for what you've been giving back to the community, and it just shows, like you said, the unity that we have here, uh, the support. I mean, this stands are filled no matter what the record is these stands fill up every single week to watch uh, the big red come out and play these kids get a lot of support and they play their hearts out and it's just so good to see the best in our community i think was on friday nights so i agree yes yeah uh and they're getting ready to start the third quarter i agree go big red enjoy the stream make sure y'all share with your friends you can watch it after the game's live so we'll see y'all enjoy the rest of the broadcast great job to our broadcast crew tonight <laughs> hey thanks robin thanks for doing this yes thank you let's get ready for some Football in the great third and fourth quarter, second half. Ready to go here. Sevier County will receive the second half kickoff. 14-14 tie. It is better to give than to receive. <laughs> in some instances. Uh, a crescent moon is rising over Hedrick Field here in Newport. Beautiful night, a little bit warm still. It is, yeah, the temperature's not dropping like I thought it might, but uh, it's turned out to be just a really perfect evening just to be in the stands watching the game. Let's go, buddy. We grabbed us a little popcorn. <laughs> still waiting for you to finish your cupcake. <laughs> All right, Cock County sets to kick off. Anthony Steinbecker will boot it deep. He's had a few touchbacks tonight. Hadn't really given him a chance. Yeah, Steinbacher, he's, he's had a just a cannon of a leg here tonight. Uh, number three, Kate, and number 13, Lane, back to receive a kick from... Two men back for the Smoky Bears. Beauty shot right there. Cock County here on Senior Night, Friday Night Live, presented by Newport Cinema 4 and McSween, McSween, and Green. Second half football here. Kick is up. Good boot again. He's going to take it this time inside the five. He's going to push it upfield. 
up past the 20. He's got a hold. And he's That's up the field. And he's going to have to be stopped by the kicker or he's not going to be stopped at all. He's inside Cock County territory, inside the 40. Well, the refs just missed a huge hold. I mean, you can see the jersey pull tugging from here. So a huge return for the Smoky Bears. They're going to start inside Cock County territory with great field position. Yeah, the Cock County defense is going to face their first test on this first drive. So uh, we'll see if we can. Uh, we've got the momentum coming in. Let's see if we can maintain that. First and 10. Bears in a bit of a jumbo package. Two men in the backfield. Two wide receivers are going to hand it off, and it's oh, fumbled. Fumble. It's on the deck. He picks it back up, and he's going to lose a bunch of yards, but he's going to recover the football. Mason Ellis recovered. It's like he just dropped the handoff, Rob. Well, we had a – I didn't even – I didn't get a chance to see who it was, but he got in the backfield so quick, he just blew that play up. And they were very fortunate to hang on to the ball. See it. Hit the deck there on the replay. Looks like number 63 got in the backfield. That's going to be Zeke Ramos. Second down and 15 now. Take the snap. Going to be a play action. Actually, it's going to be a handoff blown dead. Flag on the play. We'll see what the indication is. It's going to be against Sevier County. That's going to back them up further. This is what we need. Yeah, we're starting to see the miscues. Uh, our defense came out hitting on all cylinders and disrupted that first play, and it's causing some miscues on the part of the uh, Severe offense. Severe backed up to the 48-yard line. Yeah, this aggression on the part of the Cock County defense is really starting to get into the heads of Severe County. Second down and long here. Another shotgun formation. Cock County brings a blitz. They've got men in the backfield. He's going to throw, and it's going to be an errant throw incomplete. Yeah, that one just went right into the dirt. Uh, that never had a chance. They're down and long now. We had a flock of cocks in the backfield. Whole flock of cocks. The big red swarm playing great on defense. It's going to be third down and 20 now. Yeah, I'm impressed with the tenacity that this defense continues to play with. Really great run defense, great pass defense. We had a pick six in the first half. Severe County and a shotgun. Got a long way to go. Quarterback takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He steps pressure. up in the pocket. He's still stepping up. He's going to be dragged down. Short game there. Well, that's going to be a, Yeah, that's going to bring up fourth and about 17. For Sevier County. Carson Hobson on the tackle for the Big Red. Boy, this, their quarterback is just getting less and less time to throw the ball. Uh, we're really getting after him. And now that they're in fourth and long, that's going to limit their options. All right, Sevier County brings the punt unit on. Got to watch the fake here. That's it. I was suspecting they may try to go for this one given the, the field position. Got it at the Cock County 45-yard line. Punter stands at his own 40. Here's the snap. Here's the kick, low kick, wobbly kick. Gonna take a great bounce, might bounce all the way into the end zone. It's gonna be close, boy. And it's a touchback by the skin of our teeth, Rob. Woo. Yeah, that was uh, that was about a half an inch away from being down on the inside yeah. of the one. Pretty good wobbly line drive punt there. Great, it was a great punt. Uh, yeah, and the coverage got down there just, uh, we, we dodged a bullet on that one. But what a big stop by the Big Red. Yeah. I mean, we said that they, we're gonna see how they reacted. They reacted well. They sure they, did. They really stood strong on that drive. That was impressive. Baylor Baxter and company will take over now at their own 20-yard line. We got 10 minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, that's Cox got and Smoky Bears all tied up. Excuse me, Rob. Oh, that's okay. That's got to be a massive confidence builder for this whole team. Baxter looks over at his wide receiver. He's got two to the left side. He takes the snap. Play action. He's going to keep. Dancing around the backfield, trying to get around the corner. He does, and he's going to have a gain of about seven there on first down. Nice piece of running. Boy, he's really selling the fake, isn't he? Shifty running by senior quarterback number one, Baylor Baxter. And again, let's give the credit to those blockers. I mean, he's able to make this stuff happen because he has the time to do it. We've seen him in the first year he was a starter. He didn't have a, as, a whole lot of time to get what he needed done. And uh, they, he is really, that protection has really stepped up for him tonight. I don't know if I've been watching UT football too much, but I'm just, I'm itching for a deep ball. I think we ought to throw one over the top. 
So we get a ba Baxter is not in the backfield here. New quarterback in the game. That's Ethan Fine in the game. He's going to hand off right side. Trying to cut the corner, and he does. He He's finds got a first down and more. Well, I just I didn't know if he was going to be able to make it turn uh, turn that one up the field, but he outlegged the runners, the defenders, and made a first down. That's a Jeremy Faison first down for the Big Red. We're moving. That is the first Jeremy Faison first down of this half. 9.03 on the clock here in the third quarter. Looks like on the sideline, Baylor Baxter is uh, he's uh, stepping a little gingerly. He's, looks like he may have hurt his leg. All right, first and 10, Big Red. We got the ball at our 32-yard line. Ethan Fine is in the game at quarterback. He takes the snap. Play is blown dead. Looks like it's going to be a penalty against the Big Red. Uh, it's nope. a timeout on for the Big Excuse Red. Excuse me. I think Baylor Baxter may be coming back into the game. Having a big game tonight on senior night. It'd be great to have him back in there. Absolutely. I saw him standing next to the coach on the sidelines. We'll see how this goes. Another quick shout out for our sponsor, McSween, McSween and Green. They've been good to me. They'll be good to you too. Go see him for all your legal needs. And we'd like to thank McSween, McSween and Green for being uh, McGreen being one of our presenters tonight for this broadcast. And also Newport Cinema 4. Uh, we appreciate your uh, sponsorship. And uh, we ask everybody to go out and uh, if you have any legal needs, see McSween, McSween and Green. And uh, hey, it's, there are a lot of great movies coming out and a lot of great movies out for this uh, holiday season coming up. Believe it or not, it's November. It's next week, if you can believe that. It's a great movie, it's a great movie season. Number one, Baylor Baxter is back in the ball game now on first and 10 for the Big Red. He's in a shotgun formation, three wide receivers, got an H back and a half back. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Looking right, now looking left and rolling. He throws out to the flat and it's incomplete. Um, Lake in France was the intended receiver there. It was just, just a bit off target for that one, but that's a really difficult throw to come back throwing across your body like that. Definitely. Second good, down and 10 The good now. news is Baylor looked like he had his, had to, his wheels were back up to speed on that one. He wasn't, it didn't look like he was in any kind of discomfort. Looks like he was walking a little gingerly. Might have been an ankle issue, but he's back in the ball game. He's a competitor, isn't he, Jack? Absolutely. He has developed so much in the last two years. Second down and 10, Baxter looking. Got a little bit of pressure. He's going to throw. He's got a man and it's caught. Close to the 40 yard line, that's Oren Hazelwood. Boy, Oren Hazelwood just caught a bullet from, it is a great sure-handed catch as well. That's a great, well-executed play. Baxter certainly has some arm strength. He really does. This has been impressive. Third down and four now. Cox playing tempo. They're to the line. Looks like somebody jumped off sides on the hard count. No flag. Not sure why. I think if they don't make contact, they can get back across. Depends on what mood the ref's in sometimes, too. <laughs> Baxter takes the snap. Looking to throw. He's got a man. There's it's the first caught. down. And that'll be a Jeremy Faison first down. That's Kendrick White on the reception. Another nice senior. catch for Kendrick White. Boy, Baylor Baxter is just on target tonight, isn't he? Absolutely. He is throwing some lasers. Big red on the move. Jeremy Faison first down. Eight minutes left in the third quarter. We're going to hand it off here right up the middle. He's got a little bit of room. He cuts it up. Going to be a gain of about four there on first down. You know, I really like the play calling on the part of uh, Coach Dox tonight. He's mixing it up. He's giving his players a chance to, to play to their strengths while uh, also taking advantage of what uh, Sevier County has given us. Uh, he's really doing a good job, and the guys are executing very well. Coach Dykes, a great guy, smart guy, great coach. We're lucky to have him. You know, and he's not just he's not just concerned about winning games. He's he is. I've talked with him, and he is concerned with making great young men, developing them as people, not just as players. And I have the just uh, utmost respect for that. Second down and six now. Big Red on the move. They send a man in motion. We got three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Now the H back comes back to the backfield. We're going to hand it off right up the middle. He pops it out, has a gain of about three or four there. Positive yardage. Yeah, he really got some yardage after the tackle on that one. He could have been down about uh, three yards short of where he was, but he moved the pile. And the pile moved, but honestly, our lineman helped him out, the pile moved with him. So that's a really great team effort. All right, third down and short now. We're in Smoky Bear territory. 
46-yard line, 47-yard line. I like this, Jack. We're showing Severe County that they're not the only ones who can run the ball up the middle. Yeah, and this is a nice methodical drive. We're really working the clock now. We're inside of seven minutes left here in the third quarter. Baxter takes the snap, hands it off to the right side, makes a move. He's got a first down. He's up the sideline. That's a Jeremy Faison first down. Wow, what a run. What, what a series so far. This is well executed. And you know, these long, in the third and fourth quarter, these long grinding drives are gonna wear their defense down and give our guys a little bit of a rest. Okay, it's first down and 10 now. <laughs> Six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Another shotgun formation, four wide receivers. Baylor Baxter. Reddies takes the snap. They bring pressure. He's got a man. It's caught. It's going to be another first down. He's moving up the field. He's the first down 30, and then some. 25. He's going to be caught down around the 22-yard line. Number 24, Oren Hazelwood on the catch. Boy, Oren Hazelwood is having a good game tonight. He is really, really doing great. He's everywhere tonight. Another great throw from Baylor Baxter with the pressure in his face. Well, he's short-handed. He showed agility, power there. He showed the full package. All right, Jeremy Faison first down. We're knocking on the door again. Cock County takes the snap. Hand off inside. We're inside the red zone now. A couple of yards there. Stacked up. Yeah, he just ran in the wrong place, wrong time. On that guy, just got him wrapped up really quickly. That is freshman running back Daniel Price there on the carry. Good job hanging on to the ball there, though. He had a lot of guys on him. Smokey Bear stacked him up after a gain of three yards. Going to be second and seven. And we're at the Sevier County 18-yard line now. Baxter on the move. Throwing bullets. Looking around, takes the snap. Looking to throw, he rolls right. Still looking. He throws right. What a catch. caught. Great catch there. It's going to be close to another Jeremy Faison first down. I think he, yeah, they're looking like they're going to mark him uh, clear the first down. Yep, he just waved the flags on, the poles on. Beautiful throw, beautiful catch. Boy, the big red moving the sticks tonight. How about that? And it's first and goal now. First and goal for your fighting how about this, Rob? Uh, last time we got it down here, we shot ourselves in the foot. We need to push this one in. Yeah, we're going to have to execute in the red zone. Uh, we're we're hanging with these guys, but we're going to have to make it count when we get down here. That's true. This is our chance to take the first lead of the. Well, we have the. Who scored first? Us? No, we scored first. No, they scored first. Didn't they? Yeah, first lead of the game. All right, Baxter sends a man in motion and takes the snap. Looks like he's going to run it up the middle. He's hit with a swarm of white jerseys. Looks, looks like, like he may have had a short game there. Yeah, it looks like a severe read that one all the way. Second and goal now. <clears throat> We'd like to once again thank the Grease Rack for being a sponsor and congratulate them on 50 years of just wonderful food, wonderful people, wonderful service, and for being a true landmark here in Cock County. Uh, we are uh, proud to have them as a member of uh, member of this broadcast and proud to have them in our community. Many, many, many more years of continued success to the Grease Rack. All right, Baylor Baxter in the shotgun. Looking over the defense. He's looking to throw. He's looking left. He's got time. He throws. End zone. Oh. And it's just overthrown there. Looks like he was trying to hit Lake and France. He wasn't. Well, what an effort he made. He must have jumped three feet in the air on the He had a 36-inch vertical. He almost came down with that ball. Lake and France got his hands on it. Couldn't bring it in. It's a pretty tough catch to make. It'll be third and goal now for the Big Red. We'd rather have six than three, Rob. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we're playing with these guys, and uh, we're going to have to make, uh, you know, get all we can out of this. I don't think field goals are going to win the game. This is going to come down to who makes the big play. Well, I think you called it before the game. You said this might be a defensive struggle, and it's proven to be true. 14-14, knotted up here with three uh, minutes and 54 seconds left in the third quarter. It is first and All right, Cock County. Shotgun formation. Baxter has Carson Devotai in the backfield. He's going to run it right up the middle. And he's moving closer to the end zone. I don't think he quite got in there. 
Good effort, though. Yeah, he's going to he's going to be really close. Speaking of Carson Devoe time, uh, Carson, uh, your parents, uh, I have uh, wanted us to give you a special shout out from uh, Mark and Amber and the rest of your family. Uh, they want to tell you how proud they are of you, and uh, they just love coming out to watch you play, and they've enjoyed seeing you don the red and the black out here. And uh, they and we are extremely proud of you, Carson. You done great. So we have an injured player down on the field here for the Big Red. We'll see what's going on with that. Well, Rob, what do we got to do to win here? Uh, well, I think it's like you just said it yourself, Jack. We're going to have to capitalize on these opportunities. We've got, it looks like, it's third, probably third and goal coming up, I think it is going to be here. Second and goal. The second and goal, okay. All right. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, we're going to have to punch this in. We can't settle for three points. Uh, I think if we take the lead here, it's going to come down to, We've got a lot of guys playing both ways. Which is going to happen first? Is it going to be their frustration or our fatigue that, that tells the tale here? Because we can see the, they're making some mental mistakes on the, on the Severe County side. We're playing a cleaner, better game than they are right now. We're actually outperforming them. So if we can punch this in and keep them mentally off their game, and then that's going to create, I think, the best opportunity for us. So we've only got, what, about a, another – another quarter and three minutes to go here right. so yeah if we we can punch in one this score maybe one more that probably will will be enough i'm thinking yeah what do you think i, mean, I think our defense is playing great right now yeah this is really the big red iron curtain tonight this is the most balanced football on offense passing and receiving and then offense versus defense and special teams it's the most complete game i think i've seen play in quite a while this is impressive all right it's second and goal baxter takes the snap he's looking to throw he's going to step up and he's trying to get towards the end zone. He's struggling. It's going to be a little bit short. And it's going to be third and goal. Third and goal from what looks like about the one and a half. I mean, that's a, a great effort on Baxter's part. He didn't have anything there. So instead, of, instead of trying to force it in down here close to the end zone, he just uh, tucked it and ran for it. And uh, looks like he's going to be about three and a half yards shy, maybe four-ish. I don't mean to get ahead of myself here, but and I don't think this would be a dramatic statement. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if we could pull this one out, I think that would be the biggest win of the Scotty Dykes era. You may see the goalpost come down tonight, Jack. <laughs> Carry him off to the Pigeon River. <laughs> All right, third down and goal. Big Red knocking on the door. Carson Devotai is in the backfield with Baylor Baxter. He's going to throw this thing. He's going to throw it to the end zone. He's looking for Brazen's two. He got him. What a catch. Wow. Oh, Big Red. Stewart, the all-star. Touchdown, Big Red. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fighting Cox are up on Sevier County. The first lead of the game. We're leading in the third quarter against Sevier County, folks. 20. Look at this replay. Watch this catch. Comes back to the ball, fights for it, got it. And he was being interfered with that time. I mean, that guy was about to take him home to meet his parents. He was so close. <laughs> Beautiful catch there, Brazen Stewart. Steinbacher. Oh, it looks like we're going to run a little funky motion uh -oh. here. Are we going to go dazzle. for two? Baxter, he's going to throw this thing. Throw he got the it. End zone. That's good for two. Cock County's playing to win this game, baby. Boy, yeah, exactly right. Well said, Jack. They are playing to win tonight. These boys came ready. They want it bad. Big Red up 22 to 14 now on the Smoky Bears of Sevier County. Beautiful stuff here. There's a shot of Scotty Dykes. You know he's proud. Oh, yeah. I am, I am so happy for him right now. He has put so much effort into these young men. It's in the effort that he's put in, not just as players, but as people. And to see this kind of reward, it's just, uh, I love it. You just, uh, you love to see that kind of character yeah. just paying off like that for these young men. This, they're going to remember this for the rest of their life. No matter if they win or lose tonight, the effort that they put in and the plays that they've made tonight, we won't forget it. I know they won't forget it. Uh, and whatever happens for the next, oh, quarter and two minutes, uh, they have, <laughs> they've got a lot to be proud of. Amazing effort here tonight from Lake in France, Baylor Baxter, Brazen Stewart, a host of other guys. Oh, the offensive line, the defensive line, the special yeah. teams. Uh, the kicking, the kicking game. They have played a complete game tonight. This has been, this has been fun to watch. Super fun to watch. It has. It's been. A, a, we picked a great game to do today, yeah. Jack. Senior night here at Larry Williams Stadium, Hedrick Field. It's Friday Night Live, presented by <coughs> Newport Cinema Four. Excuse me, and McSween, McSween and Green. This is a great one, folks. Don't go anywhere. Boy, Jeremy Faison picked a, a great night to sponsor the first yeah. downs, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Big Red will kick this one off. 
great, Chris. Good, Chris. Up by eight points now. And how about Steinbacher? He has been just stellar tonight. Oh, I got it. I got Scotty Dykes pulls out the fake uh, extra point for a two-point conversion. Now Steinbacher's going to pooch this one. Right on the play. It's received and blown dead. I think I heard some whistles while the ball was actually in the air. I believe you're right, Rob. That was pretty good. Let's we'll see what the call is from the Zebras. Excessive kicking, or <laughs> that's about the only thing they haven't called on us tonight. And that is going to be an offsides call on Cock County. We'll have to re-kick that. Well, you know, that's actually yeah. I, I actually think that may be a positive because uh, that was not Steinbacher's best kick tonight. You know, no, it wasn't. That pretty much amounts to a mulligan for him, and I think uh, I'd like to see him just boot this one. Going to move him back five yards. He'll kick off from the 35 now. Exciting stuff here on Friday Night Live. If you kick a ball twice, is that a reboot? <laughs> Too many cupcakes, Rob. Too many cupcakes. He's on a sugar high. Yeah, you got to. That's fair. I don't know if he's a better mayor or comedian. It's really hard to tell right now. <laughs> Steinbacher boots it. It's another short one. Kicking it to the up man, I suppose. Uh -oh. And it's fumbled. Muffed. He's going to jump on it inside the 30-yard line where the Smoky Bears will take over. <laughs> All right, we'll see how, what the uh, what the big purple does to respond to the big red. Uh, I'm no obviously no football coach, but I believe they're trying to keep it away from the uh, return man there, kick it up to the up man after mm -hmm. that big return on the last one. Yeah, you, yeah, that's, you make a good point. Actually, this is a much better field position than when they kicked it deep last time. It's on their 30, their 30 instead of our 30. So, yeah, you make a really good point, Jack. I think it's, it's well played. All right, Sevier County takes over. Their quarterback is in the shotgun formation. He's looking to throw to the left. It's going to be a little bit of screen pass. He's got some room. He's moving up the sideline. He's going to have a first down. Uh, that was just a well-executed play on Severe's part, but you got to give credit to him on that one. They had great block and great pass. The guy got up as soon as he got the ball. Uh, but our guys responded and closed the gap as quick as they could get there. Good blocking there on the screen play. Goes for about 12 of the first down. The 39-yard line. Severe County. Four wide receivers set. Halfback in the backfield. Cock County's bringing a blitz. Showing blitz. They're going to throw that screen oh, again. Oh. It's blown up. No, that's, that ball's still alive. Not sure if that was a forward pass or if it went backwards. They blow it dead. Nonetheless, it's incomplete. Let's see a replay on that one. Donovan Ramsey broke up that. It's pass. awfully close. Take Does a look at it. It looked here. like it may have been a backward looked pass. Looked like the wide receiver yeah. backed up there to catch it. I don't know. Yeah, Rob. that's a backward pass. I, I don't think. know, Rob. Yeah. If you look at the yard line there. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that was a backward pass. I think that, that should have been a fumble going the other way. Yeah, I agree. The oh, they may be, subsequent uh, play is blown dead here. They may be going to the review booth to <laughs> check the last play. <laughs> False start there is going to back them up five yards. So there's a little bit of a consolation for you, Rob. Yeah, we'll take that. I like the ball. Have another cupcake. <laughs> All right, it's going to be second and 15 now. It's great to see that this, with one minute and 37 to go in the third quarter, this level of aggression on part of our defense is still consistent. Cock County has got a five-man front. They're going to bring the heat here. Devotai is blitzing. They're going to throw deep, That's and yeah. it's way overthrown. It's going to be third and long. Great pressure there. Yeah, and I think that may that pressure may be what caused that ball to be overthrown. I think the quarterback saw the big red coming. One minute and 31 seconds left here in the third quarter. Your Cock County Fighting Cocks are up 22 to 14 on Sevier County High School. Well, it looks like we're just we're bringing the whole chicken coop on there just about every play on here. And why not really when you've got third was this a third down and about 15 here? That's essentially. That's when you want to blitz and because uh, it's tough to run the ball and get a first down at this point. They've got no momentum and no traction on offense lately here. Third and 15, quarterback drops. He's going to throw. It's going to be caught, but it's going to be well short of the first down. It's going to be about fourth and five-ish. Interesting to see if they're going to go for it here inside their own territory. I don't see the special teams unit coming on the field. Looks like they are going to go for it. It's going to be fourth and six. Yeah, this is another chance for the Big Red to make another huge stop. They've had several of those tonight. Big All right. The crowd's getting into it here. Fourth down and six. This will be a huge stop here. Looks like some confusion on the uh, Sevierville County side of the ball. 
I wouldn't be surprised right. if they call timeout here. Yeah, we're going to yeah. have a timeout. Yeah, they're calling timeout. They're really rattled right now. The crowd's into it. I think I think uh, that uh, Cock County's in their heads a little bit tonight. They didn't see this coming. Yeah. The starting quarterback for the Smoky Bears, Christian Hoffman, is out. Looks like they have a defensive back playing Mason Ellis playing quarterback. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, the Woodshed. Uh, you know, this, uh, hey, it's a weekend, it's a fall weekend. Get up into the mountains, up into Cosby area, and go stop off at the Woodshed and grab you a nice big plate of ribs or a steak. Or Beautiful spot up there. Hey, they've started making some French onion soup if you're up there on occasion. Man, that's some good stuff. Uh, we're up there quite regularly. Michelle and, uh, and her gang, they just, uh, and they take care of you, and they're so friendly. They're such great people, too. It's not just the food. It's the, it's the people, and they really make you feel at home there. Great family atmosphere. Absolutely. Yeah, because it is a family. That's right. Uh, and we also like to thank, the, speaking of families, the Smoky Mountain Home Health and Hospice. Uh, if uh, Whenever every family goes through uh, situations, uh, tragedy strikes everyone at some point. And uh, Smoky Mountain Home Health is dedicated to being there to make those times as, as easy as possible and as comfortable as possible so that you, they can take enough of your worries away so that you can worry about the things that really matter, which is people you love. Thank you to Smoky Mountain Health and Hospice for being a, a wonderful sponsor. Thank you to all our sponsors tonight. Fourth down and a long five. The Big Red Iron Curtain looking to stop severe. And these stands are still packed, Jack. Here it is. They got a big jumbo set. They've got a long way to go in that. Cock County's got everybody in the box. Cock County bringing the whole chicken coop here. Yes, quarterback what they're looks showing. to the sideline. He's looking for another call. I don't think he likes what he sees there. Three men in the backfield. Looks like they got two fullbacks and a tailback. Yeah, they're putting the beef package in. That's for sure. Quarterback change like play. Watch offense. the play action here. And Try looks it like off. we got a false start on Sevier County. It's going to push him back even further. They tried to draw us off sides. This a delay. Oh, false start. Yep. And I believe they're bringing out the punting unit here to kick this ball away. And Cock County's going to take over. Jack, it always fascinates me when you watch a football game how much of it is psychology. And right now, I think that not just the, the performance on the field, but also the psychological battle is being won by Cock County as well. And that's one that we've had trouble with in the past. Absolutely. We've been our own worst enemy for, for years and years, but we finally seems like we've cracked the code on that. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have kind of gotten out of our own way. Here's the punt. Oh, it's blocked! blocked. It's blocked! It's blocked. And we're going to eventually jump on it and take it. I don't know why he's just standing there. Let's move on it, baby. <laughs> Go, big boy. Down inside the 25-yard line. What a wow. Unbelievable. Carson Hobson looks like he got in there to block that punt. And that was recovered by number 68, Chris Flockhart, the junior. Chris Flockhart got on that ball. He wasn't going to let it go. No, he was not. And the Big Red are going to take over with excellent field position. Wow. I mean, we're talking, we've seen, again, offense, defense, special teams. Coach Dykes has these guys playing their hearts out in every aspect of the game. Yeah, speaking to what you said, how great uh, look at the student section is on fire. Look at this. This crowd, the, the stands are still packed. Here we go. We need to score here. Baylor Baxter takes the snap. He's going to run it up the middle, and he's going to be swarmed by white shirts. Taken down after no gain. Yeah, I think they're starting to key in on him. The good thing is is that we've developed some other weapons in here that he can hand that ball off or throw it to, and they can get the job done too. So it's not a one-man show. We're under one minute here in the third quarter. Cox up by eight right now. Great heads up by a play by Flockhart to grab that ball yeah. and hang on to it. And then he had like five guys on him, and he was still making ground. Well, I mean, we've had all the momentum since the first quarter, Rob. We really have. Shotgun formation for Baylor Baxter. Four wide. Takes the snap. Looking to throw right. Got a man in his face. And he's going to be dumped at the 34-yard line. It's going to be a sack. And they'll bring up third and long. He looked like he lost his footing a little bit. And uh, I'm really lucky that he didn't uh, lose that ball. He had two guys on him. And that had the ball like he was going to throw it. And uh, thankfully, he was able to hang on to that one. It was a big hit there. He looks OK. Yeah, yeah. He took a lick. He's a tough kid. Clock is going to run out here in the third quarter. We're going to go to the fourth quarter now. Fourth. Up by eight points. What a, I mean, 
Here we go, Jack. All around performance. Fourth quarter, Jack. We're going to get it done in the fourth. Just a beautiful all around performance from the Fighting Cox. There you go. I, I, I Here you go, Jack. Fourth I quarter. I can't say it enough. Let's get it done in the fourth. Let's go. Go, Big Red. Let's go, baby. It's Friday Night Live. That's it. <laughs> Woo! It's from Ric Flair. To, you got the hair. Do the Ric Flair. Yeah. Why not? Let's do it. Live, baby. Woo! Let's go. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. Big Red Machine <laughs> is back. That's what I'm talking about, Jack. 12 minutes left to play. We're going to take this ball game, Rob. We're going to take this ball game. Let's jump around. That's it. 1972, this Smoky Mountain secret has been serving at the best steaks this side of the Mississippi River. Welcome to the Grease Rack. Again, uh, the change of seasons is coming. The winter is coming, Jack. <laughs> so when the winter comes, you want to be ready. So get keep those pests out of your house before they even decide to get in there. Just shut the door just like a Cock County defense. Third down and 17 now. Baylor Baxter takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He's got time. He's rolling to his right. He's still looking. Looks like he's going to try to throw it down. It's, oh, oh, boy. Lake and France right off his hands and yeah. incomplete. Almost okay. caught that boy. That ball stayed in the air for ever, didn't it? Yeah. Another bullet yeah, from Baylor Baxter. <laughs> Can't uh, fault Lake and France there. We'd also like to thank our presenting sponsors. Tonight's broadcast is presented by Newport Cinema 4. The holidays are around the corner, so Newport Cinema 4 would like to tell you a few of their, about a few of our favorite things. We like fresh, hot popcorn, hot chocolate, cuddly kittens, Dodge Challengers, and dogs of all kinds. We also like blockbusters on the big screen, the Smoky Mountains in the fall, Good Country Cooking, Fishing, and Dolly Parton. Be sure to add us to your list of favorites this holiday season. We're going to kick a long field goal here. Steinbacher puts a big boot into it. It's going to fall short oh. and no good to the left. So, Smoky Bears will take over. We can't convert to any points there. We are starting the fourth quarter with an eight-point lead. Yeah, let's thank our, uh, our other presenting sponsor, McSween McSween at Green, Attorneys of Law. We'd, uh, again, this, this uh, is presented to you by both Newport Cinema 4 and McSween McSween at Green. We thank, thank, we'd like to thank all of our other fine sponsors. We couldn't do this without you. And uh, we just want to thank you all so much for bringing Friday Night Live yeah. back. Uh, we're having a great, if you can't tell, we're having an awesome time. Uh, we're having a, a, just a super duper time here. So this is, and the ball, the, the balls, the, and I feel like we're watching the balls right now. The big red are playing their hearts out and this just makes it even better. I, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as we are. <laughs> I hope so. All right, Smokey Bears take over. They're going to take the snap here. The quarterback looks to throw. He throws a wobbler out. We got good defense on it. Is it Did he up? pick that off? Or was it caught? Ooh. Uh, wow. We almost got a incomplete there. Yeah, Great almost defense. got a uh, pick there. Great defense there from number 23, Tucker Embry. Yeah, Tucker Embry just yeah he played that ball perfectly. He's the only one that had a chance to catch that yeah. one. Yeah, man-to-man coverage. He played it great. Second down and ten now. <coughs> Two men in the backfield are going to hand it off right side. Cuts up the corner. He's got a couple yards, but he's going to be met by a bunch of black shirts. Whole flock of cocks. Wait, is it me, or are we becoming better tacklers as the game goes on? I think uh, we're just playing with so much intensity right now. It's just we're flocking to the ball. We're bringing them down. We take, you know, earlier in this game, we get our hands on them, wouldn't bring them down. Not anymore. These guys, these young men are playing like a team that knows they can win this game, that knows they should win this game. And it's so good to see. Third down and seven, another big third down here. Quarterback takes the snap and drops. He's looking to throw, he steps up, he's gonna run. And he's gonna be met. He's going to be short of the first down, pushed forward a little bit by his lineman, but it's going to be fourth down again. 
Yeah, it's going to be fourth down deep in severe territory. We'll see what they do here. Looks like we have a player down on the field. We got a timeout on the field for an injured player. Timeout on the field for an injured player. Looks like a, on the field. Possibly a cramp or something. He's reaching for his leg. So let's hope it's nothing serious. Unseasonably warm tonight. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I know usually on senior nights, uh, it's pretty frigid out here. Yeah. I remember uh, well, when uh, Rob, the, our uh, owner, the, the CEO here of HMG, uh, his senior year, uh, it snowed. We, we all went out. To, he's, he's my son, by the way, if you haven't said <laughs> it. Uh, but we all went out to the Huddle House, which was our tradition after the games. And uh, when we came out, it was midnight, and it started snowing. It was, all, it was on Halloween night, actually, was the game. Wow. And it started snowing that night. So I don't think we're in danger of any snow tonight. No. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Beautiful weather here. It is. I'm not sure who the injured player is there. Number 52. Oh, see the, uh, it looks like injured players coming off the field. He's jogging off the field, so that's that's great. That's Jacob Robertson there. Number 52. Trots off the yeah. field. Looks like he's okay. We got a fourth down and short now. Yeah, Jacob, yeah, he's, he's trotting off the field looking good. I'm glad to see that. I mean, this would be a huge stop here. Oh, yeah. We'll see what happens. Quarterback takes snap, hands off up the he's middle. He's in the backfield. Boy, I don't know. We'll see where they mark it. They're going to give him the first, it appears. Yes, sir. They yeah, are they gave it to him by just a, just, a, just a foot or so. Got it by a nose hair that's going to move the chains. A nose hair. <laughs> so with 10 minutes and 20 seconds left here in the fourth quarter, Cox hanging on. Defense looking strong. Quarterback takes a snap. Going to throw this time. A little screen pass caught. He's moving okay, up the coverage. field. Whole flock of Cox is there. No game. Might have lost one. Well, we had about five Cox to hustle to the ball that time. Great pursuit there from the Big Red. You know, we're, we're, we're blitzing to take away that running game. Our secondary is responding brilliantly to this. They're playing man coverage as a result, and uh, they're really shutting down this passing game. All right, second down and 10, Smokey Bears at their own 30. Quarterback takes the snap, plays Blondet. Looks like it may be a false start by the offense, you would think. We'll take that. It looks like it's going to be an offsides call there. Offsides. That's going to move them forward five yards. It'll be second and five now. Don't want to help them out any, Rob. No, exactly right. Yeah, this game's too close. All right. We've got them on their heels. We don't want to open the door for them to get back in this game. Smokey Bears at their 36-yard line. Quarterback takes the snap. Going to run up the middle. He's got a little bit of room. He's going to be met, though, after a short game. Yeah, that, that middle game of the of uh, Severe County, it's not paying the dividends it did early no. in the first quarter. We've shored that up, haven't we? We really have. Yeah, we've responded well, made the adjustments we need to make. That's why they keep, I mean, they keep having to convert on third down. Third down and three now with nine minutes and 10 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Cock County's up. Severe County, gonna run it again. They're gonna be close to another first down. They're gonna have it. Depends on the spot here. Looks like they're gonna give it to him. So just barely again by a nose hair, they'll inch out the first down. Moving the ball up the field now at the Cock County 42. Speaking of drives, are you ready for your new drive? If you are, then head on down to Stinnett Automotive. They'll look, they've got new cars, used cars, they've got whatever you need. They will find the car for you. Quarterback takes the snap. He's under Rolling. pressure. He's going to be. Oh, he's going to fumble. The ball's out. Looks like they jumped on it, but it's going to be a huge loss. Well, Cock County brought the pressure that time, and they uh, sacked the quarterback. He lost a good 10 yards on that one and almost coughed the ball. Yeah. Well, he coughed it up. We, he almost turned it over. Really reckless with the ball there. Yeah, let's let's have some more of that. By the way, Rob, clock's still running. We're almost down to eight minutes now. Clock's our friend now. Shotgun set. Quarterback rolls. He's still in pressure. rolling. Still got pressure. It's going to be oh, almost picked up by, by Lincoln Lake France, France again. We'll another one. Oh, there's a flag on the field. Folks, do you have any special occasions or people that you want to celebrate, like for a, for a T-shirt or anything, need printing that you need done or a sign or yard signs or anything like that? If you go down to Fast Screen Designs and Custom Printing, they will take care of whatever you need. They can do it. They can design it. And if you have a design, they can take care of that too. So whatever you need, go down to go down to Fast Screen Printing and, uh, and Design Services. They can do it all. 
good folks out there too. Really, yeah, yeah. Ricky and his wife are just super people. Third down and a country mile. So it looks like that was that penalty was on severe. We just declined it, I guess. All right. You would think it now, would be fourth down territory. Not sure here. They're deep in their own territory. It's Severe's turn to have third down in Pittman Center. Quarterback drops, steps up in the pocket, throws. Oh, and Pitch. it's intercepted! It's going the other way! He's still he's on at his the feet! 35. He's moving, he's at the 30. He's inside, he's down to the 26 yard line. Down to the Severe County 26 yard line. <laughs> the Orrin big Hazelwood. Another turnover. Didn't we, weren't we talking about Orrin Hazelwood earlier? He's playing like a beast on both sides of the ball tonight. Or in Hazelwood with an interception. They almost got one on the previous play. And now we're down inside Smoky Bear territory. Look at the effort. I mean, not only does he get the ball, but he returns it for a good 20 yards. Good stuff there. And here comes Big Baylor Baxter, number one, senior quarterback here on Senior Night. It's Friday Night Live, presented by Newport Cinema 4 and McSween, McSween and Green. Baylor Baxter gets under, gets in the shotgun. Seven minutes and 48 seconds to glory. All right, Baylor Baxter looking. He's going to take this one up the middle. He's going to cut it outside. He's going to break a tackle. He's getting up the sideline. He's got some good yardage there before he's pushed out. He getting a good five or six on that one, and we'll take it. <laughs> Hate to keep announcing the clock here, but it's starting to become a big deal. Seven minutes and 26 seconds left now in this ball game. Cock County up 22-14 over Severe County. Well, I don't know how he stayed in bounds on that one. The clock is the clock continuing to run. The clock is our friend at this point in the game, Jack. You're absolutely right. And they're going to let it all run out as much as possible before coming to the line, Cock County, in a pistol formation, three wide receivers and an H-back. Tailback behind him. Baxter, looking, takes the snap and hands off. Left side. He's got room. He's going to cut it up. He's going to cut it outside. Now he's going to cut it up. He's going to have a Jeremy Faust first down. Well, Jeremy, Jeremy Faison. Faison first down. Okay, there's a flag. Looks yeah, like we, it was a, maybe a, an area of what you might find a yep, holding call, which was about 10 yards away from the play. So we'll see what kind of damage this does. Would have been a first down. Not so much now. You know, that... That wasn't anywhere near the play. I'm not sure what bearing that had on on the proceedings. I mean, there must be something in the water here because we never get the calls. Second down and 15 now for the Big Red. They're still inside Smoky Bear territory. A touchdown here might put this one away. I agree, Jack. Yeah, a score here is imperative. Three wide receivers for Baxter. Sends a man in motion. It's Lake and France coming across the formation. Baxter takes it, rolls, looking to throw. He's, He's going to throw. It's a little bit short there and incomplete. Looking for Brazen Stewart, couldn't get him. Yeah, that ball was just a little low. It hit him right around the shins. So we're going to have third down and long. We're in that weird territory in between a punt and a field goal again. Don't think a field goal would work from here, Rob. No, we tried it from here uh, last time, and uh, I, I think definitely the – if we could get a, a field goal right at this point, honestly, if we could get three, that would be just about as good as a touchdown with this this short – this little time to go in the game. Going to need 15 yards for a first down. <coughs> Got the ball at the Smoky Bear 34-yard line. Friday Night Live, a lot of action tonight, baby. Boy, this is a this is a scorcher. Baxter takes the snap, looking to throw. He's going to fire it, caught by Stewart. Stewart makes the man miss. He's going to be pushed out of bounds, short of the first down. Now we'll see what we can do here. Offense looks like they're staying on the field here. Yeah, now we're in that given uh, given the, our kicker's leg capacity. 
Uh, now we're in that little decision there where it's a decision a little tougher. Steinbacher does have a big leg, and they are going to bring him on, it looks like, to attempt a field goal. Would this be about be, a 35 yarder? Uh, well, you, you add 17 on to the field, so this is about 25, 35, almost a 40 yarder. Okay. About a 39, about a 39 yard. Steinbacher, the senior on senior night, is going to attempt to push the Cox up here by 11 points. Jacob, Jacob. Snap is down, kick is up. It's, it's a good. good one. It looks beautiful. It's good! It's good! Steinbacher! Three points for Cook County. It is a two score game, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful kick. And that'll make it 25 to 14 with six minutes and six seconds left in this ball game. Dare I say it, Jack? Pandemonium reigns. We might be doing this interview from the field <laughs> post game. Wow. Cock County. That was a beautiful kick. He could have made that one from another 10 yards out. Great kick. Long kick. Great protection, great kick, great hold, great snap. These guys are just hitting like an, an engine on all cylinders. Really complete, a complete game, as you've said, Rob. Wait, who would have thought coming in with the uh, a two and seven Cock County, and some of those games have been really lopsided losses, yeah. uh, especially the last few games. Right. Two and seven Cock County fighting Cox versus the six and three Sevier County. Uh, Sevier County actually has won them uh, several conference games. Right. And we've lost. We haven't. This will be our. We haven't won a conference game yet. And uh, here we are on senior night. Who would have thought that we would have an 11 point lead with six minutes to go in the fourth quarter? Cock County hasn't won a conference game this year, didn't win one last year. This would be a, I can't stress this enough, this would be an absolutely huge win for the Big Red. You know, I, I thought the, the Tennessee win against Alabama was big, but this might be bigger, Jack. This, was, this will be right up there. Uh -oh. Here's a squib kick from the Fighting Cox. It's going to be taken and caught. Pretty good catch there by the Smoky Bears at about the 36-yard line. Jack, what do, you, uh, what do you think we need to do for the rest of this game here? Well, obviously the defense is going to play down. This is the defense's game to win right yeah. now, and they've been playing great. I don't think we've given up any points since the first quarter, Rob. No, we yeah, exactly I mean, right. They scored 14, jumped out on us uh, pretty big, and now it's we have scored 25. That's a great point. 25 unanswered points by the Fighting Cox tonight. Yeah, and that's just a that's just a full team effort. Offense, defense, special teams. They're getting it done across the field. All right, Smoky Bears on the move. Pass is caught. Not going to be much though. Might have lost one. And there's well, that was, defense, Rob. He was met and wrapped up by Orn. Is that Orn again? That is. And the Smoky Bears have a player down Orin on the Hazelwood field. Makes, the, makes another tackle, a key tackle. I don't know who we're going to give the game ball to tonight. There's a lot of uh, candidates. I would give it to you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> You're a generous man, Rob. You're a generous man. You didn't get elected mayor for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm incredibly proud. In all seriousness, I'm incredibly proud of, our, of the guys the way they're playing tonight. And like you said, I think you're exactly right. This is the defense's game to win now. Uh, yeah. The offense has done what they need to do. They, they put the points on the board. Now what we have to do is just play another six minutes, five minutes and 52 seconds of solid defense. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we just we don't even have to play perfect. We just can't self-destruct. Yeah. And. I'm, I have full confidence in the defense right now. Yeah. Offense is playing great too, but this has been a lockdown defense for three quarters now. Now, now. now is the time to look at the look at the body language of the players on the field. You're going to see a look at our body language. Our guys are hyped, and uh, you're not seeing that kind of energy on the other side of the ball. That tells you where the momentum is, and that, who's winning that psychological battle. Cock County, a four-man defensive front. Smokey Bears take the snap. He's going to run this thing up the middle. And he's going to have a bit of a game. He's got a first down and more. He's out past the 50 into Cock County territory. That's the best run up the middle that they've had uh, since the first quarter. And kind of an interesting choice there to run the football. They're running out of clock, Rob. <clears throat> yeah, they really are. Uh, one of the Cock County players, a little slow, getting up, he sprints off the field. Quarterback takes the snap and runs it up the middle again. He cuts it out to the left side. He's got some more room. There's a flag on the play. Might be holding. Uh, I don't think it's – it looks like it might be we had some players digging off the field before the snap. We may have had 12 men on the field. We'll see what the indication is from the referees. 
What a game here tonight on Friday Night Live. Presented by Newport Cinema 4 <coughs> and McSween, McSween and Green. Uh, no. Keeping that careful watch on the clock. 5-12 to go in the ball game. Clark County fighting clocks with the Smoky Mountain Bears 25-14. What a boost of confidence this would be for Scotty Dykes and the crew going into next season. Oh, this is this is just a, a not just a moral victory, but just a just a huge victory in general. If if we can keep it together for the next play the next five minutes the way we've played the last three and a half quarters. Well, Sevier County is on the move. Down inside the red zone now. Quarterback takes a snap. He's gonna run right up the middle again. We gotta shore that up. He's down inside the 10 or almost to it. It's going to be, it looks like second and short. Sound as the clock creeps under five minutes to play. I think what they're doing here is they're spreading us out and <coughs> running right up the middle with the quarterback. Yeah, exactly. It's. I think you're exactly right, Jack. They're trying to make those gaps. Well, there's some kind of infraction there. It must be a false start. It looked like it. Too many people moving at once for offsides. So that'll back them up five yards. Make it second and seven. <laughs> Big Red Iron Curtain defense hasn't allowed a point in almost three quarters now. Yeah, 20, 25 unanswered points. That's impressive. All right, here we go. Second down and seven. Quarterback. Looking to throw. He's, he's in got the pressure. In his face. Oh. He's going to step up, avoid the rush. He's going to run to the right side. He's got some room, but he's going to be wrapped up close to a first down. <laughs> Looks like Carson DeVotas, second effort, made the tackle, saving the first down. So it's going to be third and short. Four minutes and 15 seconds left now. Third down and two for the Smoky Bears of Sevier County. Flushed the quarterback out of the pocket and uh, made him scramble, and Carson DeVotas was able to close the deal. Boy, we almost dumped him in the backfield, too. Really did. Big third down here. <coughs> Clock runs under four minutes now. Three minutes and 57 seconds. Quarterback takes the snap. Run right up the middle. Going to have a first down inside the five. Tick, 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 Rob. That's right. And uh, here's a factor, too, is uh, the uh, Sevier County only has two timeouts remaining in this half. All right, first down and goal. Smokey Bears. Quarterback takes a snap, running right up the oh, middle again. Pop the stun. Not getting in there. Should be second and goal. He hit the line with a head of steam, and he just got stopped in his tracks. Second and goal. Need a big stop here. Quarterback looking to throw. Steps up and throws to the end zone. Looks like it's going to be caught for a Smokey Bears touchdown. Six points there. This one's not over yet, Rob. No, it's not. I'm, I would anticipate an onside kick coming up here in the near future. I believe they're gonna go for two here. It's gonna make, this will make it 25 to 20. If they can get a two point conversion, that'll make it a field goal game. 3-12 to go in the game. We'll see what they pull out here on the two-point conversion. You got the jumbo package in. Number two takes the snap. Got hands behind the fullback, and he's going to be dropped. He's I don't dropped. Think he, he didn't make it. it. No, sir. Big Red Iron Curtain stops him. Boy, Big Red got in the backfield in a hurry on that one. Tried to go with the jumbo package, hand it to the Let's fullback. Let's see the replay on this. Let's see who gets back there. One of these, one of our guys just shot, came through like a shot. Carson DeVotai. Carson got back there. What a play behind the line. Boy, he just got through there in a hurry. Dropped and he's excited here. when he gets up. He knows what he did. Carson DeVotai's hair is on fire tonight. Boy, it's, boy, so many of these seniors are playing that way. These guys, they are, these guys are playing like men on fire. I'm telling you. Folks, it's Friday Night Live, presented by Newport Cinema 4, Swain McSween and Green, Jack Color here with the mayor, Rob Mathis. You know, Carson DeVotai may be a junior, but he's playing like a senior tonight, isn't he? Yeah, you got time. All right, there is a shot of the scoreboard. We've got three minutes and 12 seconds left. 
here in the fourth quarter. Cox trying to bring this one home. And not a single person has left the stadium. This is, the stands are still packed. Here we go, gonna have an onside <clears throat> kick here. I would anticipate that, Jack. Especially with uh, 312 to go, only two timeouts. They can't afford to give us the ball and, and we get a couple of first downs, that's game. I don't think they can risk kicking it to this offense right now, the way they're playing. No, I agree. Cock County gonna try to get the ball back here and salt this one away. Taylor Madison oh, actually is going to kick that one deep. And it's gonna be taken by Lake in France. He makes a move. He's dropped at the 25 yard line. Don't wanna have a fumble here. Exactly, yeah. We, this is our game, baby. It's our game right. to win at this point. Big Red are gonna take over inside their own territory here. You would think we'd see a heavy uh, dose of run game here. Smokey Bears do have two timeouts. So we're fighting Cox take over with three minutes and six seconds left to go in the game. Boy, this is uh, this is this is good stuff here. <laughs> you, there you go, some of the crowds on pins and needles. All right. Fighting Cox in the shotgun. Excuse me, the pistol. They send Carson Devotai in motion. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle. He's going to try to get it outside. Mm. It's going to be dropped. He lost some yards on that one. Yep, lost some yards there. Hazelwood probably should have got north and south on that one. Tried to kick it out. Didn't work. Yeah, uh, in the last quarter, he had that one where he stretched it out and was able to turn it upfield, but they just got to him before he could do so this time. Yeah. Pretty big loss there, but the clock's running. It's Two minutes, minutes and now. 40 seconds left now. Cock County taking their sweet time. It's gonna be second and 15. And the Fighting Cox have it at their 20 yard line. Baxter still in that shotgun. Still got three wide. Here's the snap. Baxter's got the ball. He keeps it. He's dancing around, He's trying to cut a corner. Gets out past the 20 yard line, not much there. It's going to be third and one. So we'll see if Scotty Dykes gets aggressive here, maybe try to throw a pass, get first down, really salt this thing away. And Severe Kenny calls a timeout, and that freezes the clock at 2.08 to go in the game. What do you think here, Rob? If you're uh, Coach Mathis, what, what, what kind of play call are you going with here? Uh, if I'm Coach Mathis, hey, well, you're kind of in a tough spot because they know you're going to have to throw the ball, so that's probably what they're expecting. But if you run the ball, and if you get an incompletion, then that stops the clock. So, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's a, maybe, uh, maybe a safe little dump pass yeah. to the outside, maybe a screen. I kind of like the idea of running the ball again, make them burn that last time out, yeah. or let the clock run down to where they only have you know a minute and a half to try to score. Yeah, exactly. yeah. right now the, the clock, and the, if you can get them to burn that last time out, I think it's going to be, if you do a pass, I would have to say something pretty safe. Yeah. And what a big stop that was by Carson Devotai. Now they have Huge. to score a touchdown yeah. um, in order to win this ball game. That, that could be the difference maker is yeah. that stop on that two-point conversion. Yeah, absolutely. All right, third down and 13 yards. Cock County has it on their own 23-yard line. Baxter, number one senior on senior night. <clears throat> Looking to take the Cox home here for a big win. <clears throat> and it looks like we're gonna get a false start penalty. It doesn't really look like we had any action going there. Not sure how that happened. So this is something you gotta watch out for. When the game is on the line, this is when the small mistakes will kill you. You gotta really just focus and, and you gotta focus and execute. Right. Just now, it's just, just like you have in the last four quarters, the last three and a half quarters. Yeah. Third down and about 18 now. Yeah, yeah, I'm like I'm like you, Jack. I don't know. A first down would be great, but are yeah. you just looking to burn up some clock at this point? And you don't want to risk a turnover, for sure. Exactly. All right, Baxter, shotgun, Hazelwood in the backfield. They are going to throw here. Baxter's looking deep. He's going to oh. go a little bit short. Oh, and there's it, yep. a penalty flag. There Brady it is. Stewart was the intended receiver. The defender beat the ball to the receiver. Looks like a P.I. call here. That's not going to give us a first down, but it will move us up. 
And we can redo third down. We're all grown ups, Jack. You don't have to spell things out. <laughs> Let's see what the call is from the refs. It is pass interference. Now this opens up the Cock County playbook dramatically. When you got third down and four now, you got a lot more options. Two minutes and three seconds left. The clock is frozen. <laughs> So what do you do here, Jack? Co what does Coach Color do? Uh, Rob, I'm going to run this football. That's what I'm going to do. I want to make them use their timeout. The clock is now running inside two minutes. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you can push forward, get the first down. If not, punt the ball, let your defense play. Yeah, I agree, Jack. Baxter in the shotgun. They try to draw him off sides with the hard count. Not going to work. Going to throw. It's caught by Lake and France. It's That's a first be down. A first down. That big is a first big down Jamie right Faison first down. One minute and 35 seconds left here. That was huge and an aggressive call there. I'm glad I'm not the coach because I would have ran it. Jack, I haven't done the math, but that might be game. Look at this throw here. I mean, a, a laser beam. Wow. And I don't know how you play soft coverage on a play like that. He threw that on like it was on a clothesline. Yeah. Beautiful throw. Great catch by France. Oh, yeah. Lake and France. He just, yeah, he just grabbed he just that sure-handed catch. All right. So, the Smokey Bears have burned their last time out. And I believe we can just take some knees right here, Rob. Yeah, I agree. Cock County fighting Cox, two and seven on the season, no conference wins, and we have dominated this game for three quarters. Yeah, we really have. Yeah, it's, I mean, we, we shut them, we blanked them for three and a half quarters, yeah. scored, and then stopped the two-point conversion, which was huge. Yeah. Uh, this has been just a just a, a joy to watch. Absolutely. For so many reasons. Yeah. It, one, it was a great game. Watching our the young men from here in Cock County play like champions tonight. Yeah. They have played. This is the best game I think we've seen, Jack. And I don't know, I don't know when the last time we saw them play this well. I, I, and especially against a conference opponent, this is a big deal. It is. It, and a neighbor, you know, Sevier County. This, these are there's bragging rights on the line now yeah. for the next year, and for the seniors for a lifetime. Yeah. Baylor Baxter, <clears throat> looks like we are in the victory formation. <laughs> looks like the, uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep the fans off the field tonight. <laughs> looks like, yep, Big Red's in the victory formation. Baxter takes the snap, takes the knee. Clock running, we got a minute and 30 seconds left before this one's over with, baby. <laughs> And the Sevier County Bears are all out of timeouts. No timeouts. Left for the Smoky Bears. A minute and 15 seconds left in counting. Really unbelievable tonight. Boy, what a game, Jack. Uh, if you'd have, if you'd have told anybody in this in this stadium tonight that this two and seven team coming in against a traditional powerhouse over in Sevier County would, would play like this and, and finish the game like this. I don't know how many of them would have believed you. Sevier County six and three on the season. They're going to drop to six and four. Cock County going to improve to three and seven. Under a minute to go, 47 seconds to go in the game. First conference win for Cock County in two years. Yep, they're under, they're under 40 seconds now, Jack. So one more, uh, take one more knee and that'll be game. Beautiful stuff. Not 30 seconds to go. Looks like the student yeah. section is. And Baxter takes the knee, and, and that's going to do it. That's Ladies game, and gentlemen, folks. the Fighting Cocks have knocked off Sevier County. Your final score, Cock County 25, Sevier County 20. Wow. Say, it, say it with me, Jack. Pandemonium reigns. Woo! Big Red. Get it done on senior night. What a scene. Counted three, two, one. And, and that's that the game. final horn. It's official, folks. The Fighting Cox, get it done. Scotty Dykes, huge win. Yeah, huge win for this program. Yeah. 25 Jack, let's, 20. Give, let's give us one more. Up top. There we go. Yeah. Huge Boy. win.
Can't what reiterate a, that enough. No, what a what a huge win for this program, for this coach, for his players, for the community. Yeah. Even. I mean, this is this is massive, Jack. Uh, this, nobody saw this coming. They didn't think these guys could do it. They made. I don't. Need, I don't know if they even believed they could do it, but they by golly they went out and did it. And they they overcame adversity, right and left. I mean, they had bad call. Yeah, they had calls that went against. I'm, I won't say bad. <laughs> Questionable. How about that? Questionable calls. Works. But they had some mistakes that they made. The fumbles, things of that nature. But they never let it get them down. Yeah. They kept that. Showed that resilience. There's your final score, ladies and gentlemen. 25 to 20. Fighting Cox, Big Red. Just the, and, and uh, again, a reminder, folks, this is brought to you by Horizon Media Group. If you've enjoyed this, uh, just uh, reach out to Horizon Media Group and let them know that you enjoy them putting on these broadcasts and to just send them a message just to tell them how much you appreciate it. We appreciate you for watching tonight. Uh, we just uh, can't thank you enough, can't thank our sponsors enough. And, uh, uh, Jack, I hope I hope everybody at home has had as much fun as we had here tonight. Man, this does kind of feel like UT Alabama. It really this is, it's got this that is vibe huge. to it. It sure does. This yeah. is great i mean unbelievable players out on the field uh, praying after the game great this stuff is, this has been so much fun tonight so your final score here on friday night live presented by newport cinema four and mcsween mcsween and green cock county high school fighting cox 25 severe county smoky bears 20. what a victory